past have faded into memory. Now in a new age, a favorite son is poised for a long overdue journey. His fearless quarterback, by sheer strength of will, leads a group of tight-knit underdogs that have all of Pullman dreaming of Pasadena. The path, however, is anything but clear. Three teams sit atop the Pac-10 standings, all with one game left to decide their fate. And this is what the Cougars face today, a sold-out Husky Stadium, as ABC Sports College Football brings us to Seattle, number 11 against number 20 for the Apple Cup, and much, much more. The road to Pasadena looks like this for Washington State, with a win here today, a UCLA win, or an Arizona State loss next week, they're in. If Washington State loses, UCLA and Arizona State must both lose. With the two straight losses, Washington has already been eliminated from the Rose Bowl hunt. Hi again and welcome everyone. I'm Terry Gannon. The hype and the attention all week focused on Washington State, and rightly so. This, simply put, is the biggest game of their careers. But it's interesting to note that Washington has won six of the last eight meetings in this rivalry, and Tim Brandt, it's the Huskies who are the favorites today. Yeah, and the Washington coaches, Terry, are wondering why. They're all banged up. And Washington State comes in very healthy, playing well, really hot. And, of course, they've got quarterback Ryan Leaf. This is the biggest game of his career, bar none. Sure, the game is a backyard pride, but it also is national exposure, Rose Bowl. This guy has a passion for the game. I mean, he is a competitor. He's tough. Some say he's nasty. He has a great arm. He throws it all over the field, and his receivers call themselves the Fab Five. Now, you've got to love that. And look at these numbers. But Washington has quarterback Brock Hewitt. He is every bit as good as Leaf. And he, too, has a great arm. But he has a sore ankle, bruised fingers, and a defense that doesn't give him the ball enough. Still, he moves the offense. And he doesn't have the Fab Five, but he's got a good one. Jerome Payton, 64 catches, excellent speed. He'll catch it over the middle as well. I think this game is going to be fun, and I think it's going to be close. Well, the other big one in the Pac-10, UCLA and USC getting ready. Let's take you down to the L.A. Coliseum right now. Brad Nessler, suddenly there are hosts of Bruin fans up here in the Northwest. This one is always big. Washington State and Washington. And for the Cougars, trying to do something they haven't done in 67 years, earn a Rose Bowl berth. See sports college football has got a good one here in Seattle today. A sold-out Husky Stadium. The hype, all of the focus, well, it's all over. It's time to play football. Washington State 9-1 against the Washington Huskies at 7-3. A cool Overcast day here in Seattle. Jim Lamright getting ready for this one. This is senior day here in Seattle. For more on that, let's go down to the field and check in with Lewis Johnson. Lewis? Well, Terry, for Lambright, this is a day so full of emotion. You know, it's this year's senior class that was the freshman class that elected to stay here in Washington, at, elected to stay here in Washington to provide the stability in a Husky program that could have easily taken a nosedive when sanctions were imposed back in 1993. But for Rashawn Sheehy, this day is even more emotional. The last time he played, his team seemed to be marching toward the Rose Bowl, but due to an injury to his knee, he's only been able to watch from the sidelines. I happened to talk to Sheehy before the game, and he says, you know, I'm from Los Angeles, but after five years here in Washington, I am so emotionally connected to what this Apple Cup is all about. And he said, Lewis, I can't put into words how painful it is not to be able to play in my last game here at Husky Stadium. You know, I can tell you, Lewis, from experience, that last home game is one of the most emotional things you'll ever do in your lifetime. He's the captain of the team. He's a senior. Here he is now. Won't be able to play in that final game in front of all the home folks. And this is a game you play all your life. You start as a little boy in the backyard. All of a sudden, you come out here. It's your last game. I can remember mine. I had tears in my eyes for the first quarter. Jason Chorak had a great career here in Seattle. Final game for him as well. Washington won the toss. They elect to defer to the second half. So it's Nick Lentz who will get us underway. Back deep for the Cougars. Kevin McKenzie, number nine, and Nyan Taylor. Another speedster back there ready to receive. Partner, I know you've been ready all week for this one. Uh, this is a game that's exciting. I mean, you talk the Apple Cup, you talk Rose Bowl, you talk Washington, Washington State. The game's always close. It's always fun. You've got quality guys playing in it. And here we go. The Apple Cup underway. And Lentz is kicked. In and through the end zone, they'll bring it out to the 20-yard line for the first offensive series for Washington State. The Chile starting lineups 
For Washington State, the offensive line, Jason McIndoo, a three-year starter there. He heads up that front. The wide receivers, you know all about them. The Fab Five, you've got four of them on there. Chris Jackson and maybe Kevin McKenzie, the guy who Ryan Leaf looks to first. And the backfield, maybe unheralded because of all the balls that have been in the air this year. Michael Black, and I know he's a guy you think will go over 100 yards today. Yeah, I really do. And the reason is they spread their offense all the way across the field, and then they'll run him to the short side. So they spread the defense thin and then let him run it. But they're going to throw right out of the blast. They spread it. Ryan Leaf is going to come up under center. Four receivers. Trips to the far side on first down. You've got five in there, actually. First one out to McKenzie, and it's caught. He is hit right at the 25. How about that? Five receivers and no back, and McKenzie shaking up. McKenzie just getting up now. The Washington defense, initially, this is how they line up with that three-man front. Chorek goes up there as well. But a lot of combinations for them against the passing offense of Ryan Leaf. Harrison Towns, Jensen, and Chorak, the linebackers. A couple of... Uh, Big-time players with Tony Parrish and Nigel Byrne, big play players, the safeties, but Jermaine Smith may be the best cover man in that secondary. Yeah, and what you're going to see is you're going to see a lot of nickel and a lot of dime packages. Instead of leaving linebackers in there matched up with these receivers, they'll bring in an extra defensive back sometimes too, so you'll have five and six defensive backs in there so they can compete. You see McKenzie now, one of the Fab Five, really uh, favoring that Lake Badland. You can see he's in pain, so they're going to be down to the Fab Four. That's an awful sight if you're a Washington State fan. Your leading receiver going out on the first play from scrimmage. Yeah, you see 46 receptions for the year going to the sideline. Again, no back in the backfield. Second in the nation, this offense, right behind Nebraska. Trips to the near side, and there are flags on the play before they can get it underway. And Tony Parrish just laid a lick on Chris Jackson. At Flood, the referee and his guys working the game today. Before the snap, dead ball, ball start on the offense. Still second down. You think the players are fired up? How about Mike the Price? Timer, please put seven seconds back on the clock. 14.45. 14.45. Mike Price now in his ninth season, thrilled with his ball club, 9-1, and one, why not? But he's having fun. I mean, he's he's up for coach of the year. He's he's won uh, nine games. It's the kind of season you dream about. Went to a couple of bowl games, 92, the best year since he's been here. But this one, better to this point. 9-1, and one looking to go to the Rose Bowl. Leaf throws it up, got a man who has a step. It was Jackson, but he overthrows him. Jermaine Smith came over to cover. Yeah, they had Smith in man coverage, but they tried to bracket him with another safety out there, so they had to throw over the safeties. Makes it tough on Ryan Leaf. They're also going to try to get in Leaf's head. You know, you talk to all the scouts, you talk to the opposing coaches, you talk to everybody that's played against him. They say the only thing that is keeping him from being the greatest quarterback is the fact that sometimes he loses his poise a little bit. He's still a little bit immature. And I guarantee you Washington's going to test him today. They're going to try to turn that switch on. If you were a linebacker today, you think you might say a few things when oh, you get back there? I'd be all over it. Almost 43% on third downs this year. Got a man, and here are flags. Nyan Taylor wrapped up with Mel Miller, and they're going to call Miller for coming over the back. Came all the way from the side judge in the back. The line judge was right there on the play. He didn't drop a flag. Before the ball was thrown, holding on the defense, 10 yard penalty from the previous spot, automatic first down. And you talk to Jim Lambright, and he says, We've got to minimize mistakes. We've got to do the little things and maximize effort. There was a good effort, but they make the mistake of getting the penalty. That's exactly what he wants to stay away from. Well, you look at the approaches to this game. The roles are reversed in a way. Washington State always the team that's looking to knock off Washington. Today it's the other way around at two different approaches, too. An emotional day for the Huskies. Washington State just trying to play it even keel. Flags again. We've had a bunch of them early. Terry, if you're the underdog in this game and you're trying to defend this offense that spreads you out, then right away you've got to get a feel for how the officials are going to call because you're going to be in a lot of man coverages and you want to bump. You're already at Before a disadvantage. Ball start, offense, five-yard penalty, still first down. Well, the second time that's happened already this afternoon. 
And Mike Price, his approach, getting back to that, though, the only guy who, who wants to play it like any other game. You can only do that so much. Your players know what's at stake. You know that Washington State has invented the Rose Bowl since 1931, but his approach all week was let's not talk about that. Let's go through our routine, go out there and play like we do every other week. Leaf gives it to Black this time. Got a hole that closes quickly at the 30-yard line. Gets back to the original line of scrimmage. Not much more. Try to run him up the middle, which surprises me a little bit. They spread that offense, and I think they're going to have their best success off the short corner. And good news for Cougar fans. Evan McKenzie is back out there. So he went off with a leg injury, but he's back on the field right now. It's got to be frustrating for a guy like Michael Black. He carries over five yards every time he touches it. He's about to go over 1,000 yards, and yet they're playing without a back right now and going to all wideouts. If Washington in motion, Leap the straight drop, throws it to McKenzie, he's hit in the air, Jackson almost had it. Incomplete, but McKenzie's getting hot. I mean, he has taken a beating so far. Best way to stop a passing team is to get those receivers looking for the hit, to get their head on a swivel. Now watch, it's a slant, hard to defend, but after he catches it, you want to pop him, boom. Tuck that tail, drive right through him. He does, separates him from the ball, and they immediately call it incomplete. You start getting those guys, tagging them a little bit, they'll be looking for you. Get those alligator arms, those short, short arms. This is no ordinary day for either team. All that's at stake for Washington State, but for Washington, it's senior day. Jackson over the middle with a catch short of the first down by about three yards. Torrey Butler, who's in there in the nickel package, makes the tackle. Yeah, you don't like to call that a pick. They call it a rub off. But there was no question about it. They tried to get him loose with McKenzie coming up underneath of him. They didn't get enough for the first. Brian Leaf not shy about expressing his opinion. Jerome Payton back deep, awaiting the bank's punt. It's a good one. Nathan at the 18, cut back, brought down up the 29-yard line. That's where the first offensive series will start for the Washington Huskies, and they start with a leader who was really banged up last week, Timmy. He's still banged up. You know, this is a guy that went up against UCLA last week, and in the second half alone, they had five sacks. I want you to watch these blue jerseys just taking him to the ground every single time he drops back. Consequently, he's got a lacerated finger, he's got a separated finger, he's got a dislocated finger, he's got a bad ankle, and that's what he's playing with today. But I'll tell you this, that kid is tough. He keeps coming back, he keeps coming back, and here he is now in the starting lineup ready to get his offense against Washington State. Well, he's known as a finesse-type quarterback. Here's your finesse. Here's a guy who's out there with all those injuries. And movement and contact on first down. Look at Payton's down by the 10. He made the catch, and he's just going. Ian Coleman hook up down there. Before the snap, offsides, contact by the defense. Five-yard penalty to the first down. Well, the Chile starting lineups, the offensive line for Washington. Krutz and Olsen, a couple of All-American types up front, maybe the best offensive line in the Pac-10. Jerome Payton having the best year a wide receiver at Washington has ever had and the fourth best, best in Pac-10 history. Heward leads the show. Maurice Shaw in there, of course, maybe not the big play runner that Rashawn Sheehy is, but he broke one for 47 yards last week against UCLA. He doesn't throw many interceptions, doesn't make many mistakes. Washington likes to stay balanced. They'll use play action. It's all set up by the run, but they don't want to put Heward in long passing downs. So it's first and five at the 35. Here comes Shaw to the near side looking for room. Falls ahead for a gain of about two. The defensive front for Washington State, the strength of this defense. You've got the seniors, three of them are seniors up front. They don't put a whole lot of pressure on, but they are a solid and a big defensive line. Randy Moore, Steve Gleason, they lead the team in tackles, and they're both second in the Pac-10 in tackles. A couple of young safeties, though. Torrey Holloman and Lamont Thompson. Thompson had a couple of picks last week against Stanford. Thompson a freshman, Holloman a sophomore. And we get word from the L.A. Coliseum that the Bruins have scored. It is 7-0 already. Ray Coleman on the reverse. Got a first down for the Huskies, knocked out. 
up at the 42-yard line. Torrey Holloman, the strong safety, got him there. Brock Hewitt trying to, trying to throw a block, and Holloman just didn't buy it, just jumped right over him, made the tackle, but it was enough for a first. Watch this now. All right, they go one way. Now there goes Hewitt. He's going to go out and get in front and try to set up a block. Here comes Coleman behind him. Now look, <laughs> not much of a block, Heck of a block. get the first down. Heck of a block on the 45-yard uh, line. I think Holloman was abused by it. He took that out, didn't take the defender out. So it's a first down. Shaw, the lone setback. Quick drop throw. He's got the freshman, Jalorn Hooker. And a gain up to the 48. He's touched it seven times coming in with four touchdowns. And let's go up for the first time this afternoon to New York and John Saunders. John? Perry had a look at the score on this Burger King update. UCLA trying to get into the Rose Bowl, facing USC. Cade McNown had a big run. Then he tosses this one to Mike Breed. Nine yards on the touchdown, and UCLA has the lead, 7-0. Terry. Cougar fans celebrating so far. UCLA, the interesting thing is, if Washington State looks like they're going to lose this game, they've got to start rooting for USC at that point. Brad Hutt, the lead back now. The offensive guard leads the way through the hole. And they got a Husky first down. Maurice Shaw, the ball carry. You know, I'll tell you this. Right now, Washington does not look intimidated by this at all. And you can feel that yesterday and Thursday when we were here wandering around. It's a very confident team. Their motivation, obviously, is that this is, in fact, their Rose Bowl. They said, we can be the spoiler against Washington State. They're very confident against this club, and why not? You mentioned earlier they've won six of the last eight against them. And, uh, I mean, they're coming into this ball game. Their motivation is we're going to beat them. It's a vindication game for them, too. They expected, or at least hoped, to play for a Rose Bowl. Not going to happen now after the two straight losses. And there goes Shaw. He's got a big hole and a big game. Down to the 32 of Washington State. And they're keeping it on the ground right now. That was a gain of 14. Got some great blocks by Kruitz, Ward, and Dalen. I mean, they just dominated the line of scrimmage. Watch the purple jerseys, and look at the hole. All right, now he cuts back, and he still has Olsen out in front of him. You know, Shaw has the speed, but not the consistency that the coaches are looking for that they get out of Sheehy. But they say he's getting better at it. He's got that big play potential. They just want it more often. 6'1", 210, just a sophomore. You got three receivers to the far side now. Here come. <laughs> They're all coming. Leon Bender came across. We'll wait and see if he was drawn. For the snap. Offsides on the defense. Five yards. Yeah, that was Leon Bender. Well, I tell you, he's a talented player, 6'5", 299 pounds, but they say sometimes he's a little bit lazy and a little bit inconsistent. Watch him. Here he comes, big old 91 across there. He saw something he was trying to anticipate and just jumped. It's the fourth penalty already against Washington State. Timmy, is that a sign maybe of how big this game is and nerves? Yeah, I think it is, and I think that right now Washington is handling it better than the Cougs. Maurice Shaw, the lone setback on first and five. Hewitt. Gives to Shaw, tripped up behind the line of scrimmage. Dives ahead to get back there. Steve Gleason, number two tackler in the Pac-10, makes the stop. And let's go back once again to New York and John Saunders. John? Barry didn't take the Trojans very long to get back into this one. Their first play from scrimmage, John Fox back to pass. 80 yards hooking up with R.J. Sauer, takes it to the end zone. And USC has bounced back for the touchdown of their own. It's all tied up at seven apiece. Terry. Hey, John. The Trojans are not going to go quietly in that one. This one a rivalry up here. That one, too, in L.A. Hewitt on the roll. Got a man. It's Coleman. He can't hang out. He was right near a first down, too. Ball was a little bit late and a little bit low, and I think he felt like he was going to get hit. Take another look at it. You'll see Coleman. See if he's not conscious of this defensive back. He was looking for Payton to clear. When Payton didn't, he went to Coleman underneath. And watch this. All right, now look. He looks up. See how he looked up to see where the defender was? And when he did, the ball went out of his hands. Boy, there's a guy that caught 10 passes last week against UCLA for 140 yards. The Texas Twister. Yeah, he loves he calls it. The Texas Twister. They all have names up here. He's got 4 3 5 speed. He's like a Twister. First big third down play coming up for the Huskies here. Third and a long four. Hewitt drops, throws as he drops. He's got Payton, his favorite receiver. A first down inside the 20 down to the 16-yard line. 
65th catch of the year for Jerome Payton. Well, you look at you look at Hewitt. Everybody says he's a finesse quarterback. The guy's got a touch. But look at this. He's on his receiver the entire time, and he just kind of lobs it out there a little bit behind Payton. But it's a slant pattern. Thompson's on him, the freshman. It's a tough pass to defend for a free safety. And so that uh, even though it was behind him, he still had time to bring it in. There's a guy who will be tested often today. Lamont Thompson had two picks last week with a true freshman, as you mentioned, Timmy. And they will go after the movement again. And flags all around. Shaw fighting his way inside the 10 down to the 9-yard line. He didn't quit. Others did at that point. He just kept going. Coaches tell you never stop till you hear the whistle. They saw the flag, and some guys did stop it again. It's against Washington State. This time, Gary Holmes dropped over. Came off sides. Off sides on the defense. Five-yard penalty. Repeat first down. Now, Washington State came in with 102 penalties. They have been. Here you go, right here. See? That's Holmes. Holmes again trying to anticipate the snap, but then, the, see, the purple jerseys don't stop. They just keep right on going. They get it all the way down to the 11-and-a-half-yard line. Some coaches will tell you that the penalties, the numbers don't really bother them. It's stupid penalties. Well, so far, it's kept the drive alive, though. Washington, here's Mike Reed bouncing off one down to the nine-yard line. Reed, the senior out of Tacoma, Washington, playing in his final game here at Husky Stadium. And the H-back, 6 foot, 215 pounds. So it brings up... Second down and a long three for Washington. Terry, the most impressive thing right now is the fact the Huskies have been able to run the football. And by being able to run the football, that's eventually going to set up the pass game. Washington has passed for at least two touchdowns in eight of the ten games. They eventually get you. Reed goes out to the slot. Maurice Shaw moves over. Two receivers to the far side and a tight end. Here comes Shaw to the near side. Closes quickly. Gains maybe a couple of yards. Leon Bender, the senior, made the stop. Bring up third down and short. Situation that Washington has done quite well in down here. And as a matter of fact, a lot of times they'll just give it to Hewitt. Let Hewitt take it himself, the quarterback. It's going to be almost two yards, though, that they need. Now, you wonder, the only thing about Hewitt is the ankle, which really, since Nebraska has bothered him, re-injured it again in the last we got beat up by UCLA a little bit. Yeah, and they're coming out of the eye, so see if they uh, they don't use a power play here. 11th play of the drive. Hunt in there as the lead back. Maurice Shaw, straight at you. He stopped right at the line of scrimmage. Second effort, he's trying to get there, but I don't believe he got it. Well, if he didn't get it, he sure got close. He's going to be right around the stick. And I, I tell you what, if I'm Jim Lambright, I, I'd go for it. And I think that's what he just said. It's early in the game. You've lost two in a row. The team you're playing could go to the Rose Bowl. I'm saying team it up right now. You can even tell the guys across the line where you're going and dare them to stop you. Well, he told us yesterday, if this game is not fun, there's something wrong. And Mike Price, I'm not sure he's having fun right now. It, I'm telling you now, I just let Hewitt take it. Shaw goes in motion. Nobody else in the backfield. Hewitt with the sneak straight ahead. He's got the first down. First and goal just outside the five. I tell you, he's a talented player. Traditional pocket passer with a powerful arm. And even though he has a sore hand and a sore ankle, he's a gutsy guy. Comes from a talented family. Huh. An understatement. Uh, what? Not, and the father as the, the head coach. Only a sophomore. Number four passer in America in terms of passing efficiency. This movement again. Washington State jumping off. The lead goes ahead. Well, you've got to wonder if Hewitt's giving him a hard count. Wow. Something is drawing him off. I mean, Mike Price is just beside himself. He's furious. I think it was number 96. It was. It was Salusa. There goes the junior. Won't be kind words over on the sideline. Teal Salusa. 
Offsides on the defense, half the distance. Repeat first down. Well, it makes it even easier now. Well, they've had words with him. Now he comes right back in. Now, Washington State has been a team that's had quick starts this year, but Washington, on the other hand, they have not. They're getting off to the good start today. You look at the numbers. They've given up 51 points in the first and only scored 45, but they're knocking on the door right now. First and goal from the three. Go to the right side, fights his way down to the goal line. Stopped by Todd Nelson, who made sure he didn't get in there. You know, Shaw looks bigger than they say he is. They've got him listed at 6'1", 210 pounds. But, I mean, he runs with leverage. Now, watch this. You get the big lineman out in front. You pull your guard. You bring Olsen out. And then look at him. He just struggles all the way down near the goal line. Six touchdowns this year, but he looks bigger than 210, and he certainly does run with authority. Reed and Shaw out of the eye now. Double tight end set. Second and goal. Here comes Stewart on the play fake. Nobody out there initially and incomplete. That one could have been picked off, and there's a flag on the play. Could have been picked off his right. But then you look at Reggie Davis, Reggie, thought he had the touchdown. Reggie Davis was there, but he was there late to me. He was in the end zone, and it, it was a sliver of room to get that one in. Well, this has been a drive that has taken up much of the first quarter. Holding on the offense, 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Repeat first down. You know, Heward's up there saying, wait a minute, our guy was held too. You see, Reggie Davis, number five, right in the middle of your screen now. Here he is. The jersey was held. Now they get it over, Second and he down. almost makes Second the catch. Down. They just pulled his jersey. He said, wait a minute, we were held, but it's against the Huskies. It's not whether you do it or not, it's whether you get caught. Well, it's second and goal, but it's all the way out just inside the 15-yard line now. Sean motion to the near side. Hewitt throws over the middle, got a man, touchdown! They oh. him into the end zone. They're going to mark him at the one, Terry. They're going to say he did not get in. One guy saying touchdown, and the field judge is trying to mark it. It's a touchdown. And it will stand. Field judge came over, threw his bean bag, and said, no, he was down at the one. See if you can tell. Under a lot of pressure. But look at Payton. Oh, he's See? in there. His knee hit, but his shoulder hit almost simultaneously. And the field judge said he marked it at the knee. The umpire said, no, he's in. The linesman said touchdown. Jerome Payton with his seventh touchdown catch of the year. And the ball was over the line anyway, over the plane. Wentz in for the extra point, splits the upright. So it's a long drive that the Huskies put up there, and they strike first in the Apple Cup. Washington up by a touchdown. They call for rain and held off to this point, but Washington putting up the long drive, 14-play drive to get on the board first. So the Cougar defense trying to regroup on the sidelines. And the Bruins now have taken a 14-7 lead over the Trojans. That one looks like a shootout. Kevin McKenzie, who was nicked up early in this one, got popped hard twice. He's back deep. Going to watch this one go out of bounds. And most likely, they'll bring it out to the 35-yard line. Wentz has been one of those guys who has struggled this year, took over Kick out of bounds. early on. Washington State's ball, first and 10 in the 35-yard line. Took over for Randy Jones after three games, but he struggled a bit. So Mike Price trying to get his offense in gear. They take over, they'll start at the 35-yard line, 457 left in the first. Good thing you couldn't watch anything on television without the reference to the Apple Cup. It is a big one, means even more this year, especially to Washington State. 
And Ryan Leaf trying to get the offense on track now. Washington had the ball for a long time here in the first quarter. Yeah, Washington State has not gotten into a rhythm yet. Six penalties in this ball game. Now, Heward is in a rhythm. I mean, the guy three for four had a great drive. We'll see if Leaf can get there now. Four receivers and Michael Black in the backfield. There goes Black trying to left side, wrapped up. Chorick was in on it along with Lester Towns. And John Saunders, what's going on with the Trojans and the Bruins? I'll tell you what, Washington State isn't liking it right now. UCLA against USC. Skip hits 16 yards on this. Number 54 on his career touchdown. All-time Pac-10 leader as he passes Charles White. USC has just scored a touchdown. The kick after is pending. It's a wild game thus far. Terry. John, they're lighting it up already in the Coliseum. Early on. Leaf looking to do the same under pressure. Throws behind Jackson, incomplete, a dangerous pass. But they came after him, and that's something that Washington, Timmy, we'll see that from them all day. It was Jeremiah Farms who came in number four and had a shot at Leaf. What they're doing, Terry, is they're bringing in their nickel packages, they're bringing in their, their dime packages, so they're playing with a lot of skilled people. See number four right here at the left hand of your screen? He's, he's shadowing him. He's the spy. He wants to make sure Leaf doesn't run. That's why he was a little bit hesitant. He was under control. Still missed the tackle. If you're gonna, if you're not gonna come full out, then you've got to make the tackle. That's a strong arm on Leaf, though. Throw going the other way. Could have been picked off though. Changing the play at the line of scrimmage now on third down. Straight drop going up top. Got a man at the 40. Incomplete. He made the catch, but out of bounds. One guy's marking it again. McWashington made the catch. One official marked it out. You know, Terry, that is the third time the officials have disagreed in this ball game. Well, and a lot of disagreement on the sideline, too. He had one-on-one -on -one coverage. Just threw it up, let his guy run under it. Now, McWashington's got a, an eye on this thing. Oh, he's clearly his out. His foot is out of bounds. And besides that, when he was inbounds, he certainly didn't have possession of the ball. That's good coverage by Smith, though. He never looked back for the ball, but he could feel it and rode him out of bounds. And a good look by our guys doing the camera work today. Good job of officiating overruling the catch. Jeff Banks, his second punt of the afternoon. Jerome Cathan with a fair catch at his own 25-yard line. A punt of 39 yards. And the Huskies will take over once again. They had the long drive, 14 plays already to put seven on the board. They'll try to repeat that here against Mike Price and the Cougars. College football brought to you by Chrysler, engineered to be great cars. Burger King, where you can get your burgers worth. National Car Rental. So what are you waiting for? Let's go. And Pacific Life, strength, knowledge, experience. Use the power of the Pacific. 7-0, 4.05 left in the first. Brock Heward leading the offense back onto the field. Terry, you couldn't help but notice the confidence of the Huskies all week. And the reason is they lead this series 33-13-5. It's even heavier here in Husky Stadium. They don't lose here very often. And they won six of the last eight. So, I mean, you can see why they are confident. So it's first and ten just outside the 25-yard line. Shaw the long setback. Play action. Hewitt looking up top. Nobody there. Hooker stopped and intercepted at the 27. D. Warren Cola on the diving interception. They had grounded out on the first drive. 14 plays and now they look long for the big one. That's not real smart. You know, they tried to do that on the first play of the other series. And you even brought this up during commercial. And I just don't see it. I mean, you've got a good drive. You've got a good rhythm. Your running back's averaging four yards a carry, and your quarterback's three for four. So why are you going to throw it deep and turn the ball over? It just doesn't make sense. Warren Cola, the junior out of Richmond, California, his second interception of the year. And Warren Hooker had stopped his route and then picked it back up. Warren Cola kept going. So it's one that maybe you look at the receiver to blame because Hewitt has no way of knowing that his receiver is going to stop. And now they're up here at Husky Stadium. Third possession of the afternoon for Washington State. Nothing doing early on. Nothing doing on this play. Michael Black wrapped up by the All-American, Jason Chorak. 
This is a guy people have been on. They said he's not having a great year, and yet his numbers are solid. But I'm telling you, this is his last home game. Chorick's been playing well. I think he's going to be great today. I think he's going to have a terrific game. Watch number 46. 46, Chorick comes through, defeats the blocker, gets in and makes the tackle. He's been doing that all year. He's been doing it his whole career. And they say he hasn't had a great year. Those are lofty standards. He's got 17 tackles for loss, six and a half sacks. Back with a hole this time, though. Popped at the 34 and brought down at the 35. Going to be about two yards shy of a first down. Nigel Burton was in there. Got a great block from Corey Withrow, the, the captain and the senior right guard. Got out in front of him and cut off the linebacker. Watch Chork this time, though. See, he's a little bit over aggressive. Takes on the blocker. It's a nice tackle, actually. <laughs> the takedown by Withrow. Though it brings up third and two. And you got trips to the near side. All receiver set. Black gets the handoff. Going to fall ahead. We'll see where they mark it. He should have the first down. And I say should because nothing's been a given so far. And they do. Let's check in very quickly with John Saunders once again. John? Terry, we told you about this touchdown. It followed a fumbled punt. John Fox to Mike Bostinelli, 17 yards for the touchdown. USC comes back to tie the Bruins at 14 apiece. Terry. All right, John, still not out of the first quarter in that one. What a great day of football. Man. Michigan State, no, Ohio, I mean, Michigan and Ohio State. You've got this one down at the Coliseum. Leaf under pressure, got his tight end. Love Jefferson with the catch up to the 43, one of the great names in all of college football. Supposed to be born on Valentine's Day. 13th catch of the year for Jefferson, the junior, out of Garden Grove, California. Yeah, he got caught up in traffic, though, and he was hard to see. Pressure was coming on Leaf. He was looking for him. He couldn't find him in all those bodies. He was saying, where's the love, man? Love is in the air, but he has not been one of the fab five. Still double digits and catches on the year. Second and six. They give it to Black, trying to get outside. Not going to make it. Lester Towns, the sophomore. How about that speed? Now, I love this guy. This guy is a player. They call him the Secretary of Defense. He makes the calls. 17, your linebacker. Watch 17 now. Here he is. There he goes. Now, watch. Keep your outside free. Keep the leverage on the ball carrier. Here's a guy that bench presses 400 pounds and runs a 4-6-40. And they say he's got a 32-inch vertical leap. He'll hit you, and he'll tell you about it. He was re recruited as a tailback. That's how quick he is. But he didn't want to be the next Jerome Bettis at Notre Dame. The offense has struggled. Where are the big numbers? Leaf has not been on so far. Over the middle, this one's caught go. Up to midfield, there are flags all around. Again, Jefferson on the catch. And we'll see what the flags are all about. Boy, flags came in from every direction that time. Usually that means a face mask, yeah. but we'll wait. Or something obvious. Although they're yeah, taking a long time obvious. to talk about it. There were two penalties on the play. Defensive holding before the pass was thrown. That penalty is declined. Towards the end of the play, we had a five-yard face mask on the defense. Five yards from the end of the run. First down. Well, tomorrow at 1 Eastern, noon Central and Pacific, the finals of the Chase Championships. The top 16 players in women's tennis coming together in New York for the title and $3 million. Then at 4 o'clock Eastern, 3 Central and Pacific time, the final round of the ITT LPGA Tour Championships are the top 30 money winners on the LPGA Tour, including Annika Sorenstam. That's tomorrow right here on ABC. Leaf starting to get in a rhythm that last pass. He beat the blitz when Jensen came. Going to give it to Black this time. Met again by Towns. They've been familiar this afternoon. Towns trying to rip the ball out. Got help again from Jeremiah Farms. You think they're not ready to play? You think they haven't looked forward to this one after two losses? Terry, they also have a great scheme. Here's the tackler right there, 17. Now watch as he'll get over, and the first thing he wants to do is try to rip the ball out. See that? 
while he's got help. He knows pursuit is coming. Right now, the purple jersey's just flying to the football. They know they've got help. A lot of talking going on, a lot of action after the whistle. Always is in this one. Leaf complete. Inside the 45 to the 43, there's McKenzie, his leading receiver. Nigel Burton wrapped him up there. Fab Five not able to get it done so far, but Leafs got him on the move right now. ABC Sports presentation of college football will return after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Second quarter about to start here in Seattle. 7-0. It's been all Husky so far, but Washington State with the ball and on the move right now. Terry Gannon, Tim Brandt, and Lewis Johnson with you. On what has really turned out, even though it is gray and they called for rain, to be a pretty nice day here in the Northwest. Trips to the near side, and Leaf, plenty of time to throw. Got a man wide open. Sean Timms inside the 20 at the 18-yard line. There wasn't a Husky jersey anywhere near him. Came all the way from the other side of the field. Leaf now 6 for 10. They caught him in a zone. Actually, they were playing in a soft zone, and Parrish was playing free back there. Watch this, he's just waiting for him to clear. Came from the other side, then he gets into the soft spot between the corner and the safety. See Butler, the cornerback, number 10, coming up. But I mean, he was wide open. And they stuffed the run right up the middle. Dewan Gilmore, the sophomore who has had a turf toe, played last week against Stanford, but has really been slowed. They say he's near 100% now. Lester Towns in on the tackle once again. We've called his name often. The good drive, though, by Washington State. You know, you were talking about how tight they looked early on, and they did. They were making a lot of mistakes. They were jumping off sides. You know, emotion sometimes gets in the way of concentration, and I certainly believe that happened to the Cougs early on, but they're in a rhythm now. Second and nine after the run by Gilmore. Straight drop again over the middle. There's Tims once again with a catch at the 11-yard line. So he's been a big part of this drive so far. Well, America's biggest road show goals in the College Station, live Friday at 10 a.m. Central, 9 Mountain, and 8 a.m. Pacific time. Another rivalry, Texas versus Texas A&M. And then at 2.30 Eastern, third night, and unbeaten Nebraska trying to stay that way against the Buffaloes of Colorado. The rivalries continue. That's all Friday here on ABC Sports. Third and one. Leaf, Black, over the pile. Should have the first down. He does. Michael Black over a thousand yards now for the the season. At 948 yards last year, he's starting to get into the flow of the game now. They weren't using him effectively early on. As a matter of fact, the Cougars started the game without a running back. They were going to the five wideouts, just going to the passing scheme. They need him to be effective for the pass. The guy averages over five yards a carry. They've got to get the run going to make the pass work. Yeah, now he's been effective here. Now they go back to the spread. Yeah, they spread him out. you got three receivers to the top, two to the near side. Leaf going to look it all over. Got time. Throws incomplete. Two men out there. Actually, Michael Black was in the corner of the end zone. He had Tims wide open. Tims was wide open, and he's really upset that he didn't get the ball. Somehow, nobody picked him up. And what he's looking at right now is good coverage, except for the one instance you're talking about, Timmy, in the secondary, but not much pressure up front. Normally, against Washington, that's what you're having to deal with, the quick drops and getting it off quickly. So second and goal, you've got the three receivers again to the top of your screen. Going to give it inside the black. Oh, he's got room. Can he get there? Yes. Touchdown, Michael Black. That was Michael Black. You talked about it at the top. Run and pass go hand in hand. Thin things out. Thin the defense. Show pass. Come back with a run. There's nobody there because they're all out with the wide receivers. They were strung all the way across the field. A wide open lane for Michael Black to run through. Ryan Lindell on for the extra point. It's up, and it is good. He had 50 straight until the Stanford game. But he hits this one, and Black celebrates on the sideline. So Leaf and the Cougars got the offense going, and we are tied here in Seattle. This is going to be a good one. No, 
Well, the road to Pasadena looking a little more clear right now, at least, than it did a while ago. The Cougars have tied this one up. And this kick by Lindell, five yards deep. Payton going to mess around back there, but it'll go to one knee. Well, Ryan Leaf, look at what he did the last drive. Yeah, you could feel him getting in that rhythm. You could feel the Cougars playing with more authority. And look at the time of the drive, and that's something they don't do very often. Normally, their drives are quick, in quick fact, scoring drives. It is the longest drive of the year for Washington State. Is that not amazing? Six minutes and three seconds. See what they do? Look at this. Normally, six plays, 59 yards, 210. That's what they average. The average scoring drive for Washington State. That was a great drive, and that's what they have to do. They've got to keep Hewitt off the field. They do that by keeping the offense and melting the clock. So here we go. Both teams with 14 play scoring drives, and we are deadlocked at seven. Maurice Shaw trying the right side up to about the 24 yard line. And Todd Nelson, the middle linebacker from Renton, Washington, made the stop. Shaw. Goes about 215, head to head with Nelson, who is about 236. It's a solid core of linebackers for Washington State. Gleason and Moore lead the team in tackles. They're second in the Pac-10. Yeah, and they're very aware of the fact that this is usually Washington's best quarter. Second and third quarters, Washington really gets things going. So they're aware of that. We'll see if they get more aggressive now. Of course, they're usually behind after the first quarter. At least that's the way the numbers have played out this season. Second and six. Shaw goes in motion. And time no more. Down he goes, Gary Holmes. His second sack of the year. That's 316 pounds on top of you. He's coming right up the gut, too. Look at 95. He's going to split the jerseys. He's going to get some pressure. Hewitt now waiting a little bit long. And every time Hewitt will take a hit like this, keep in mind he's playing hurt. He's still feeling the hit from last week. He's got that sore ankle. He's got a sore hand. He doesn't want to take too many of those throughout the day. And you don't think that defense for Washington State knows that, do you? you better believe they do. Well, it's third and long now. Hewitt doesn't want to be in these situations very often today. Going deep. Coleman's out there. And it's picked off. Number two, Ray Jackson with the interception, his second of the year. And the second of the game, and against him, they try to go deep, and it comes back to haunt him. Yeah, Terry, I, I may have mentioned earlier on, I think Hewitt is best on the intermediate routes. You know, when he throws long, he gets into trouble. And they had the running game going, they had the intermediate routes, and the last two drives now, they've come out and they've tried to throw deep, and he's thrown interceptions. If oh. you turn the ball over, you have a difficult time winning, and it's the second turnover for Washington. The only positive that comes out of that for Washington is the fact that it was third and 12, and it's very much like a punt. So you don't lose that much as if you hadn't picked up the third down. But second interception of the game for Washington State. Wide open is Tim's over the middle. One of the Fab Five up to the 47-yard line. Look out. They're cooking it now. Cooking it. It's supposed to come in the fourth quarter, but they're doing it early right now. I mean, Sean Timms, too, has come on. McKenzie was hurt early, and Timms has made some big catches. Yeah, and Ryan Leaf, too. See, Ryan Leaf now is one of those guys, when he gets that confidence going, he is tough to stop. Leaf to Gilmore. Tracked down by Towns again. Juan Gilmore, the ball carrier, and again we call Lester Towns' name. Lester Towns, quality player. We mentioned earlier the Secretary of Defense, just a young guy, sophomore. No telling how good he can be. But keep in mind, they've got two sophomore middle linebackers this year where they used to have Inky Aliaga and John Fiala. I mean, they were two quality linebackers. I mean, Inky Aliaga, that's as good as you get. But now you bring in Harrison and Towns. you got two young guys in there that are still just learning. There goes Gilmore. He's had the turf toe, and maybe he re-injured that. Ryan Leaf. Six of his last seven passes. Here we go. If Washington the catch, but he's not going to get anywhere. Washington did a nice job of reading that one. Jensen was there to make sure that he had no room. You know, when you think about it, the Huskies have lost two in a row. First time that's happened since 1989. And the defense has given up a lot of points. I mean, they're playing pretty well today. They really are. I mean, other than a couple big plays in that long drive. But, I mean, Jim Lambright's got them ready. The defense is playing aggressively, and it looks like they've got a pretty good scheme in for the Cougars. they got a home crowd that's on its feet right now, too. 
third and 12, just what Washington had on the last series. And Leaf goes up top. Jackson, one-on-one, -on -one, comes back to make the catch. Still up. He's going to go all the way. Chris Jackson to the end zone. He beat a red shirt freshman. 57 yards. And that ball was perfectly thrown. Watch this now. Butler's number 10, the defender. Never looked back for the football until the ball was there. When he looked back, Jackson made the catch and ran by him. And Two it, missed tackles, and Jackson takes it into the end zone. And it was Parrish who has missed some tackles the last couple of weeks. He's had a problem with that, and he missed the tackle, and Jackson went all the way. Lindell for the extra point, hooks it in there. Butler looked back just as Jackson made the catch. He needed help from the safety. As you mentioned, Parrish missed it. Butler gave up. Touchdown, Cougars. Guess what? Ryan Leaf has heated up. Cougars on top after the long strike to Chris Jackson from Ryan Lee. Look at this, man coverage right here. Let that thing flow. This is Butler on Jackson. Now, Butler's got good good position on him, using the silence, but stop. Look, he's now looking back for the ball this way. Here's the ball. All right, now let it roll. He misses it. Jackson catches it. And now you get help from Paris, who just misses the tackle. Scouts were saying in three games, Parrish had 30 chances at a tackle. He made 20 and missed 10. For some reason, he's not locking on and making the tackles. And the coaches have talked about it. They've worked with him in drills. They're not doing that unless drills in practice. He's not getting it done. There goes Payton reversing field, looking for a lane. Good return out to the 29-yard line. And that's where the Huskies will start this series. Well, the win tickets to this season's Rose Bowl. And online with ABC Sports College Football and solve the word puzzles to enter. All on America Online, keyword ABC Sports. Both quarterbacks playing fairly well. Ryan Leaf now really heating up 10 for 15, but the key was Brock Hewitt, who was in a rhythm throwing intermediate passes with the running game to complement it, all of a sudden started to go deep, and both times he was picked off. And now you get behind in a game, and the temptation is to go back to the air. The ground game is working so well. Now the Bruins and Trojans tied up at 21. To keep it on the ground, this time it's Jason Harris who gets his first carry of the afternoon in for Maurice Shaw, the junior out of Diamond Bar, California, who had a 55-yard touchdown run against UCLA a week ago. Absolutely no hurry now for the Huskies. So go back to what they were doing. Yeah. Bang it out, use the little short passes. Try to confuse the defense, get them a little bit on their heels. That first drive was so impressive. 14 plays, and they took a lot of time off the clock. Harris, the lone setback now. We're going to fake the reverse. Hewitt keeps it. Under pressure, going to throw it away. Nowhere to 
throw at that time. Everyone was covered downfield. And I'm not sure they fooled anybody either. Didn't fool anybody, even the fake reverse. That guy was picked up. Yep. Now, there's one thing that's for sure. When Washington State and Washington get together, as it is for the most part in the Pac-10 or any conference, but especially in a rivalry like this, you know just about everything about your opponent. Unless one of the teams has a week off to prepare and put in some new stuff, there are no surprises. They go after each other pretty good. I mean, there's some hard licks going on. Get some fresh apples in the apple cup. A lot of apple trees between here and Coleman. Harrison motion to the near side. Hewitt rolling, going to throw back at his tight end. Cleveland, who was hurt, but he's back now, and he's got a big game. And he punishes a defensive back and goes all the way up to midfield. Actually, it was Steve Gleason, the outside linebacker, who had a shot at him. And Gleason barely getting up now. Boy, that ball is, that play is set up so well. One thing you want to do is misdirect the defense. So they do that with Hewitt. He immediately rolls to his left, away from us, and then throws back. Let's their pursuit run them out of the play. Now he picks up blockers. You know, the pros love this guy. Guy has 15 receptions on the year. He's got excellent hands. They talk about how athletic he is. Say the one thing he has trouble with is separating from the defender. So they ran the motion away, and then came back to him. Look at the power he possesses. He's 275 pounds. Another one in the uh, long line of... Great tight ends here at Washington. Could be the fourth straight to go straight to the NFL. But he's down right now. He had the collision with Steve Gleason when Gleason went down. And now he's OK on the sidelines. But it's Cameron Cleland who is still on the ground. And while the trainer works on him, let's take a break. He was shaken up on the play. Looks to be okay, but watch how he comes down on the football. Boom, right in his stomach. The old breadbasket knocked the wind out of him, but he appears to be okay. He'll be back in. And he knocked Steve Gleason silly before that, but Gleason up and okay on the sideline too. Some hitting going on here at the Apple Cup. Jason Harris getting the call. Balls loose. Whistle blew, and we'll see how he's down. So they'll bring this back. There goes... Number 90, Dorian Boos, thought he had a touchdown. Well, the story so far, Timmy, and we've talked about it, Washington coming out emotional to begin with, and uh, the long drive to get seven on the board. Washington stayed a little bit tight, and all the penalties, six penalties early in this game, but they settled down. Lion Leaf has come back to put two touchdowns on the board. But uh, Washington, not a team who's going to throw it to five receivers like Washington State. Keep it on the ground, get back to that mid-range passing. No, but they'll score a lot of points. Both these teams will score a lot of points. Pass out to Coleman, caught at the 42-yard line. He's close to a first down. Had to get to the 41. Going to be just about, just a, a little bit short, I believe. See what kind of mark he got. He may have gotten it. That's the other big story so far, the two turnovers, the long passes downfield that were intercepted. And they'll bring out the chains. 14 to 7 surprises me a little bit. I really thought by the half we'd be into the 20s. I thought we'd be well into the 30s and close to 40 by the end of the game for both clubs. You got 7.08 left. It's not over yet. Oh, no, I know. We may be. Looks like he got a pretty good mark here, but I think he's still going to be just short. He got it. So a roar from the crowd, and they'll move the chains. And a smile from Jim Lamright. What does this drive remind you of? The first one. Absolutely. When they didn't try for the home run. But you agree with that. You thought they should have taken those shots. I just thought they would. Yeah. Yeah, I think they came out on that first play of the game from scrimmage, and they went deep, although yeah. there was a, a flag on the play. And I had a feeling they were going to try to take a shot. Yeah. I, I, I Please just... refrain from blowing any whistles in the stands. Their best success is intermediate routes and, uh, and running the football. Brock Hewitt, 6'5", 220 pounds. These two quarterbacks, well, you go back 15 years or so, you didn't see quarterbacks like these. 6'6", 6'5", 220, yep. Build over the defensive 
coordinator for Washington State trying to stop this drive now. 6.58 in count. Hewitt with time over the middle. Complete to his tight end, Cleland, who is corralled at the 35, brought down by Todd Nelson. Well, tonight on ABC, look at Fergie in a whole new way, an hour of adventures with the Duchess here in America. Then, a special edition of Primetime Live and a fabulous brand new episode of the Pats Practice. That's all tonight, right here on ABC. See that Good Morning America the other day? Fergie swimming with the Sharks. I think that's what the, uh, the show is going to be. She's down there with them and could not, amazing, she kept saying, amazing. <laughs> Not sure why you would do that, but it was amazing. Lake clock running out, they get it off. There goes Harris, got a big hole. And tripped up at the 25. Torrey Holloman got a piece of him, and if he didn't, he may have been gone. Dalen got a good block, but it was Harris with that explosion. This guy, he's got some wheels. You see how quickly he got through that hole? He's got the, the halfback speed, what? He'll take it, he's patient, he's reading. Now he sees the hole, now he really just kind of turns it on and gets that speed and a big burst. Gets into the secondary where Holloman and Thompson take it down. She's got some speed when you think about Harris and Hooker. Yeah, and without Sheehy in there, Harris really the guy who's going to give you that quick burst. Coleman's a 4-3 guy. And they'll run that reverse to Coleman quite a bit. Here come the Cougars on the blitz. Picked up not quickly enough. Hazen was there, but you were taking a shot. Steve Gleason knocked Brock Hewer to the turf. Tell you what, when Steve Gleason is healthy, he's solid. You know, the guy's not big, he's a baseball player. Does pretty well playing baseball, but as a linebacker, he's only 5'10 ten and a half. Comes on the blitz, knocks him down. Every time they knock him down, that's eventually gonna have an effect on him. Remember, he's got that sore ankle, bad hand. Gleason's a great story, though. You mentioned he's undersized. He was told by most colleges that he wasn't big enough to play at this level. A guy who writes poetry. Don't find many linebackers who do that in this pair of time. Writes poetry and plays baseball. Second and 10, they're gonna give it to Harris inside. Tough running, maybe down to the 22. Gotta get all the way down to the 15 or just outside of it for a first down. Gleason again in on the stop, but it'll bring up third down. Washington State defensive line's been fairly quiet. Booze and Bender not getting the penetration they've been able to get in other games. Holmes had a sack earlier in the game, but that's been it. And this is not a defense that normally blitzes a lot. They'll play it nice and tight, close what? to the vest. And now Washington going to take a timeout and talk things over. It's a good timeout there. See, 5.07 to go in the half. They didn't have the play they wanted. He was not really sure what they were going to call. Break on the field. We'll step away for a moment as well. to the defense right now for Washington State. Washington with a big third down coming up with 5.07 left here in the second quarter. Built over the defensive coordinator. So far, his defense has played well. They're up against it here, though. They've got a big third down and long. It's a situation Washington wanted to keep Heward out. Now, if Washington State doesn't ordinarily blitz, but they're going to try to put some pressure on it this time, bring some heat in a definite passing situation. Two for two from that distance. Reed in motion. Harris is in the backfield, too. Hewitt's going to throw. Arm was in the air. His arm was hit. He's picked off again. The third of the afternoon. Lamont Thompson had two last week. He's got one this week. There are flags down, but another huge turnover. And Hewitt grabbing that arm. The, the arm was hit just as he released it. And now it's not the hand. It looked like he's hard, holding the elbow. He's a tough kid, but he's in so much pain now. His third interception, so unlike him. He came into the game with 19 touchdowns and only five interceptions. Both flags for an illegal block in the back on the return. The half the distance, first and 10, Washington State. You know, Hewitt's a guy who threw 217 times this year and had only five picks. But watch this. Now, this one is not all on him. He sets, he throws, and look, now here comes the pressure, and Doyle hits his arm just as he's releasing it. You know, I think he hit his elbow on the helmet. I think that's where he hurt himself.
Well, that's one you can't tell by looking at him on the sideline, but you do see some pain on his face. Well, you did a moment ago. He's holding that arm. The fact that it's chilly out here doesn't help. Washington State taking over. Inside the 10, coming out with Michael Black over the left side out to about the 13-yard line. So the penalty with the block in the back, though, backs the Cougars up. Washington State has given up a lot of points this year. I mean, the games have always seemed to be shootouts, but the defense today coming up with the big plays and, and forcing the turnovers. Coming in, Washington was the one in the plus category and the, in the turnover category. Timmy, these are the top two defenses numbers-wise, total yards in the Pac-10, but they're really not dominant defenses. Not at all. They're not going to win the game for you. There's Black with a catch and pounded at the 21-yard line. Good leap by Parrish. By Parrish. He wrapped up that time. Got a first down, though. See, watch this. They're getting plenty of hits on him, but most of the time they're chasing. You don't want to be chasing and giving up the yardage. Oh. That's a picture-perfect form tackle. But at the same time, they get the first down. So, I mean, what does it accomplish? So you want to play college football, huh? That's that's what you're in store for, right? I tell you what, that's a great feel when you get one of those. Not if you're a receiver, it's not. 356 and counting now on first down. Black gonna try the left side. Stutter step, cut back. Brought down at the 39. Got another first down for the Cougars. Tony Parrish again brought him down, but a gain of 15. Michael Black, quality. Running back over a thousand yards now for the season. What a story he is. Had some problems with the law, had some problems in his life, turned it around. Mike Price took a chance on him and has really been good for him. Mike Price, a guy who believed in Michael Black, and now Black is a senior looking perhaps to go to the NFL. A lot of people like him on that level. And uh, whatever happens, Price, when you talk to him about Black, he has nothing but great things to say and belief in the young man. Belief with time. Got Tim's wide open over there. He's got a first down. And they'll move the chains. Well, America's Biggest Road Show rolls on next Saturday at 1 o'clock Eastern in regional action. Number 6, Penn State taking on Michigan State. That's a good one. Georgia. Georgia Tech, not a big robbery. Then at 4.30 Eastern, 1.30 Pacific, the Skins game. Tiger Woods, Tom Lehman, Mark Romero, and Freddie Couples, the defending champion. Big money. And every hole, always a great show in the Skins game next Saturday on ABC. Terry, we're sitting here watching now an NFL quarterback at work, Ryan Lee. And if you're a defense, who do you key on? You really can't. They spread it out for Leaf to take his pick. Again, plenty of time, and this time it's McKenzie over the middle, and another first down. Right now, Washington has to make some changes. They're in a soft zone, and if you do that, when Leaf gets time, he's going to tear it apart. 11 of his last 12, and they're just picking up the soft spots. They're living great big holes, and Washington State's finding them. Look at the time he has. All he has to do is throw it in there. There's nobody around. He throws it over the linebacker, under the safety, bingo. Move the chains. Leaf will tear you apart. You've got to get more aggressive defensively. Lock on man. So far, Ryan Leaf winning the battle of quarterbacks here in the Apple Cup. Changing the play at the line. Black the only setback. He spread it out again over the middle. He's got Nyan Taylor, and it's broken up. Torre Butler, who was beaten deep for the touchdown earlier, that time makes a nice play. Well, I tell you, it was a nice play. The guys down on the Washington State sideline want to pass interference. But again, Leaf had plenty of time to sit, lock onto his target, and throw hard. Boy, he is special. And, you know, there are scouts out there that think Ryan Lee is better than Peyton Manning as a selection for the next level. They think that if they have the shot, they may take him. And it's no given that Ryan Leaf is coming out, but there is a lot of speculation that he will after his junior year. 6'6", 238 pounds and a passion for the game. I just will not lose. It's Washington inside the 20, down to the 15. Who do you cover? He goes to McKenzie. He goes to Timms. He goes to Jackson for the touchdown. He goes to McWashington. That's a gain of 22. And look at this, Terry. All the way out here, outside of the numbers, that's how they spread you that thin. When they do that, there's hardly anybody out there. There's so much space that the receivers can just run free. And then when he steps up and drills it, 
Miller gives a little cushion. They're still in the zone, a little bit tighter zone. Tried to bracket him a little bit, but they picked him apart. When you spread the defense that much thin, you, uh, you leave a lot of field for the quarterback. Four of six on this drive. There goes Michael Black. They're going to try to run this. And he gets down to the 13, so they mix it up a little bit. Mac Tuiaea, number 78, the sophomore on the defensive line, makes the stop. Boy, Ryan Leaf has just stepped up center stage in this ballgame. I mean, he sets strongly and quickly. He goes through the progression. He's got great vision. He's decisive. He makes very few mistakes. And he's using his feet and his hips better now. He used to throw all arm, but now he uses his legs to get more power and accuracy. Black goes in motion. Here comes a blitz. Jensen got there, couldn't get Leaf to the end zone. If Washington tied up with Burton. And there's a flag at the, you know, about the 20-yard line. <laughs> Referee took a lick. He's up and walking around. Had flood. Uh, the, the hold with all the scrambling being done by Leaf as they picked up the blitz. Josh Smith, the defensive end, got a shot on Ryan Leaf. And when he did, he also hit the referee, knocked him on his butt. You know, the problem with backing Washington Holding State up. on the offense, 10 yards for the spot of the foul, repeat second down. Yeah, now you just give him more room. <laughs> you take your pick with the five receivers, and, and he can look anywhere. Well, what a weapon Mike Price has. And what a season. Trying to go back to the Rose Bowl for the first time since 1931 in Washington State. Trying to go up by two touchdowns here in the first half. But it's second and 24. Leaf steps up, goes down. Jensen got him. Jerry Jensen, the senior out of Everett, Washington, who's having a great year. He's having a great game today. He's been back by Lee several times and been frustrated by the fact he couldn't get a hold of it. I mean, here's your senior, here's your captain. Here he is, number 40, left hand of your screen. Look at him. I mean, he's just overpowering McShane, who's a lot bigger than he is. McShane is 6'6", 305. Jensen's 230, and he just kind of forced him back into the play. The guy who doubted he could even play at this level back when he signed at Washington. Leaf got Tims over the middle, complete inside the five to the three, and guess what? They'll move the chains again. You keep backing them up, but Leaf will make you pay. Has he been great on this drive or what? Yeah, they're cooking it now. Again, he's got pressure coming back side, but he just stands in. He's not intimidated by the rush, and Tims clears across the middle under the safety. Timeout, Washington State, number one. Washington just trying to get out of this half with 51 seconds left. Now, less than a minute left here at the half, but you've got first and goal inside the five. Football brought to you by the 1997 Pontiac Bonneville. Luxury with attitude. State Farm Insurance, like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. Valvoline, the number one choice of America's top mechanics. People who know, use Valvoline. And Chili's Grill and Bar, home of the Ranch Hand Filet. 51 seconds until halftime. Adam Hawkins in the backfield in the eye along with Black. Double tight end set. Leap on first and goal. Black trying to get outside, not going to get there. Lester Town fed him behind the line of scrimmage, backed him up outside the five. Hawkins was the lead blocker, went through. He was wondering why Black didn't follow him. Now they pull Withrow. They get Withrow out in front of him. They pull their guard. Watch 71 pull. He gets out in front of him. Now they go through the middle, and he cuts it outside, tries to beat it to the corner. They had good pinch, good containment there. Good they defensive got a, play. Got another timeout as you look at the current drive. 12 plays. Both teams have had 14 play drives. And Washington State also the quick strike to Chris Jackson. And while we have a moment, let's check in in New York, see what's coming up at halftime. Coming up on Valvoline Halftime 97, a look back at that Michigan-Ohio State game. It was a great one. Yeah, it really was. Michigan coming into the ball game, leading the nation in three of the top four defensive categories. They didn't disappoint anybody today. Great defensive performance. It's all coming up on Valvoline Halftime 97. 
you got to feel for John Cooper. <laughs> you really have to feel for the man, whether you're uh, an Ohio State fan or not. He really has a tough time beating Michigan. Mike Price has had a tough time beating Washington, but he's uh, got to a great start here this afternoon, 14 to seven as a score, and they're knocking there again. Two and six against Washington, and uh, of course, Mike Price and Jim Lamright, both from Everett, Washington. They know each other well, competed over the years. Mike Price, uh, on the road today, Jim Lamright hoping to use this stadium right now. And the noise, this place gets loud. They need a stop, and it would be a big, big emotional lift for the Huskies before halftime. A lot of time for Lee going to try to run it. Guess who is there? Towns caught up with him. Good Lee coverage. Got to about the three. Yeah, good coverage that time by the guys in purple. And Leaf hung as long as he could. Then he felt like he had to run and also saw an alley he thought he could run, make it to the end zone. But Towns is shadowing. He got back into his hook zone, but then when he sees Leaf start the run, then immediately he comes up, and that was a good tackle. Boy, he's been terrific today. Lester Towns just roaming the middle, and he's been in on just about everything. Well, and he plays with so much emotion. As a matter of fact, they've been trying to get him to, to play with not at less emotion, but to be able to control it. Now he gets back into his zone. Look at this. Now he feels leap. And now here he comes and gets him inside the five. That's a great play. He was looking for any receiver crossing in his area. And when he saw leap took off, he took off and made the tackle. Guys in the truck, Mark Loomis, our producer, David Kiviet, our director, giving us a good look. And it's uh, not easy to keep up with that man, Lester Towns. He's Derek, Derek Mobley sitting behind both of them, making sure they're doing their job. Perhaps. D Mobs. Now, Towns playing next to Jensen, who's had a great year. And then you got Chorak, who lines up on that defensive line, but is a linebacker. It's a good core of linebackers. You think he's playing huge? 24 seconds in the half. You go into halftime, one touchdown or two down. 74,000 on their feet here at Husky Stadium. With Washington in motion, Lee, going to want to throw for this one. Good coverage in the end zone. Lee through the hands of the intended receiver. Boy, great coverage by that Husky secondary. I tell you, it is almost impossible to stay with receivers when a quarterback starts to scramble because then all the receivers start to skate with the quarterback. But I mean to tell you, look at McKenzie here, number nine. He's trying to free up. There's Parrish. Parrish is locked on to him. Still has his jersey. That's great coverage there. Now you can see Leaf is running to the right, so he skates to the right. It was Chris Jackson who he tried to hit, went through his hands, but it really wasn't a real catchable ball. This is a 20-yard try now by Lindell. From the angle. And it is good. So the Cougars put three on the board. It's 17 to 7, but a moral and emotional victory for the Huskies. Yeah, that was a great defensive stop down there after a terrific drive by Washington State. I mean, Leafs on fire, and his receivers are really playing well. As it's a good stop. Yeah, a lot of great battles in this one, uh, the Apple Cup over the years. Right now, Washington State leading this one, but this week's Marriott moment takes us back to 1983 for the Apple Cup. Second year in a row, the Cougars had a chance to spoil the Huskies' Rose Bowl hopes in a downpour. Cougar Richard Calvin, two touchdowns, leading them to a victory, knocking Washington out and sending USC to the Rose Bowl that year. So, 83, they kept them out now. The Huskies trying to keep Mike Price and the Cougars out of the Rose Bowl. Don't think that that doesn't mean anything to them. It does. You know what Mike Price is upset with here? He's saying they're mauling them. He, he thinks that, that they're all over the, refer the, uh, the receivers, and he thinks that they're, they're interfering with them. He thinks they're holding them, they're bumping them around, they're banging them down deep. So he's trying to get the officials' attention, so they'll look for that. And you saw Harish with a hold on McKenzie's jersey early in that replay. Jerome Payton back deep, Lindell, and he kick it toward the sidelines again. Payton, one yard deep, bringing it back. And brought to the turf on it around the 33-yard line. Nyan Taylor, one of the Fab Five, making the stop. He's a fun player to watch, isn't he? Jerome Payton, talk about a guy that, he reminds me a little bit of Tim Dwight, the way he plays. Yeah. You know, he's got that kind of explosive speed. Does a bit of everything, yeah, a he tough does. guy. 
Yeah. Well, Brock Ewart with six seconds left. What do you think he'll do here? He's thrown 12 passes today. Three of them have been intercepted. Yeah, and those have been all the ones that have gone deep. So do you go to one knee or to take a shot here? It's the Apple Cup. Take a shot, but he's going to go to one knee. I can tell by the formation. So Hewitt takes the knee. The crowd here doesn't like it. They wanted to take one more shot, but there are plenty of Cougar fans at Husky Stadium. In fact, there are probably a lot more Cougar fans who live in this area than they do in Pullman. And Leaf, what a half he has had. Hewitt trying to regroup, come back in a better way in the second half. 17-7, Washington State up. It is halftime, and we're back after this message and a word from our ABC stations. I'm at a sold-out Husky Stadium right now. It's the Cougar fans who are having the most fun. The Rose Bowl dream still alive. They're on top. Good one going on at the L.A. Coliseum, too. Here's Brad Nessler. The 70th meeting between the Bruins and the Trojans through a half, an offensive explosion by these two teams. We're tied 21-21 at intermission. Brad Nessler and Gary Danielson with you from the Coliseum. Uh, Matchup that in the last 10 games been decided by less than five points. <laughs> last year it was two overtimes to go 48-41. We got the makings of that same thing today. I think that stat, you won't have to change that one. A lot of offense, but very even. USC has been very balanced, running and passing the same. UCLA still two quarters. Quarters left to try to get to that Rose Bowl. And, of course, Seattle has more to say about that. Let's go back to Terry. All right, Brad. Well, the Cougar fans here hoping for that Bruin victory right now can't tell. Too close. 21 all at the L.A. Coliseum. But here, an all Ryan Lee. Well, look how they spread the field, sideline to sideline, and they spread the defense thin. When they do that, they find a lot of open areas to put their receivers, their Fab Five, and they've been doing that very effectively. Now, look at this. Once you start doing that, you spread out to stop the pass, and the run becomes very effective. And, of course, Black had a big first half. So right now, they're cooking it. They've got everything going. Washington State, 17 points on the board, and they're starting to smell the roses. And Washington won the toss, deferred in the first half, so they will receive Ryan Lindell's kickoff here. Jerome Payton back deep near his own goal line. He's See. back there along with Joe Jarzinka, the walk-on. See if he can give Washington good field position to get Hewitt back in his ball game. Three interceptions has killed him. Terry Gannon, Tim Brandt, Lewis Johnson here at Husky Stadium in Seattle. And it's Jarzinka bringing it back has a lane. Good return. There are flags now, though, out to the 29-yard line. Flags on the opposite side of the field. He's a fan favorite. Jarzinka, he's oh, got his own fan club. They, they, they love sure him does. Here. Jarzinka with the free-flowing mane, Oh, too. sure. Look at him. Looks like he's about 15. Gig Harbor, Washington. Only 5'7", 165 pounds and a sophomore, but he grew up a big-time Notre Dame fan in uh, the Washington version of Rudy. <laughs> they do love him. On the return, holding by the return team. Ten-yard penalty from the end of the run. First and ten. Remember what Jim Lambright said? They've got to do the little things. They've got to minimize the mistakes and maximize their efforts. Well, you can see here, you've got the three turnovers that have really killed them. And then, of course, the points off turnover, 17. Dean Winter first half stats, and those are the telling ones. The 17 points, though, Timmy, it, it's interesting to note, those were long drives. They were passes down the field, so Washington State then sustained drives off of those turnovers. And keep in mind, too, they were down inside the five, Washington State was, and Washington stopped them, held them to a field goal. That was a big stop. Five interceptions on the year, three on the afternoon. This defense stopping Brock Hewitt, now there's movement. On the right side of the line, number Chad 71, Ward. Chad Ward, the freshman. So, inauspicious start to the second half, to say the least, for Jim Lambright. That's right. He's not panicking ball, yet. False start on the offense. Five-yard penalty. Still first down. Chad Ward, the first true freshman to start on the offensive line since 1987. That's really his first mistake of the ball game. You know, I knew it was going to happen. As soon as we showed the streak at Hewitt, that he doesn't make many turnovers, that we were going to jinx him. I said that last night when we were talking. And here he has three in the first half. Like a free throw shooter at the line. Every time you say he's a 99% free throw shooter, he flanks one. Hewitt on the run under pressure, under throws the intended receiver. And Cameron Cleland, the senior tight end out there. 
and Darian Booz took a shot at it too. It was legal, but every time you get one of those on Ewart, he starts, you know, he feels it. He's a little gun shy. We could see him in the tape doing it last week, you know, where he started to pull up. He was afraid to step down on his sore ankle, and he's not throwing as freely. You see, Booz is right behind him. It's a legal hit. Tries to hold him up, actually. Doesn't hurt him. But look, he comes right down on his head, knocks him into the turf. And Hewitt's aware of that. And he, Oh, yes, he is. You mentioned the bad ankle. In the first half, he had the elbow injury, too. Looked like he hit somebody on the helmet after throwing. Marie Shaw, the first run of the second half, right into the line. And stopped right there. Gary Holmes made the tackle. John Saunders, what's going on with Penn State? Well, Penn State is riding the legs of Curtis Enos. 78 yards, one tackle there, a couple of brushes with the law, but he takes off just the same. 16 carries, 137 yards, and two touchdowns for Curtis Enos as Penn State is rolling on Wisconsin. Derek. John, one of Tim Brandt's favorite running backs in the country, Curtis Enos. And the Nittany Lions early in the year. And of course, Michigan will be going to the Rose Bowl, but it's been a heck of a year for Joe Paterno. Couple of blips along the way, but Hewitt with time this time, and through the hands, this one's picked off again at the 40-yard line. Lamont Thompson had two a week ago against Stanford. Guess what? History repeats itself. Isn't it ironic? Every time they've tried to go deep, they've had the interception, but this ball is almost caught. Payton goes way up to get it. Good defense there. Pulled away by Jackson, and there's Thompson, 19, the benefactor of it, the recipient of the interception. Almost like the old tip drill. You know, you practice that every day in practice. You go through that tip drill, and you wonder, why are we doing this? Why are we doing this? Coaches run us through this tip drill. Well, there's the reason. Well, Thompson getting the start and play, in part because Dwayne Stewart, the senior, has been out with an injury. He made the most of it, to say the least. Leaf on the roll, flags on the play. Wide open receiver, maybe too wide open. Sean Timms had five receptions in the first half. But there are flags down at the line of scrimmage anyway. Brian Leaf's upset. He thought Timms took the wrong cut. He was wide open. He thought he led it to the inside of the field. So got He's saying, run the right route. Timms comes behind. He says, run the right route. And don't think he won't let you know about that, too. Holding on the offense. Ten-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Repeat first down. Watch this, Terry. This is what I'm talking about. Watch how upset he gets. He is furious. Man, he's got to turn back inside on that. He's wide open. You know, they talk about quarterbacks being stoic and not letting you see their emotions. Not this guy. And you go back to Jim McMahon and players like that. It, Ryan Leaf, a guy who's much more comfortable in a flannel shirt than he is a three-piece suit. I like this guy a lot. Though. He wears his emotions on his sleeve. He's talented. Fiery. Five receivers in now. He's going to pick his spot. Chris Jackson, incomplete. He's out of bounds, and let's check in once more with John Saunders in New York. When Lamont... And we'll check in with John in a moment. Not able to hook up right now, so we'll keep it right here. Ryan Leaf ranks among the nation's top three quarterbacks in pass efficiency. And if, if I was to, to pick a quarterback right now, I mean, this guy, I think he'd be my guy. I'd pick him over Peyton Manning. Manning puts up the big numbers still in the Heisman hunt, and so is Ryan Leaf. Michael Black now, good run over the left side into Washington territory down to the 46-yard line. What a day Manning had, over 400 yards passing. Yeah. Didn't miss many passes. What did he I throw, mean, five touchdown passes? I mean, it, you know, it, it's it's fun to do, and you have to do it because there is a Heisman Trophy, but how do you decide between what Ryan Leaf has meant to his team and what a Peyton Manning has meant? And, of course, Manning really, when you look at the Charles Woodsons and, and those type people, Manning doesn't have the vehicle right now because they're not in the national championship pick, ship picture. Third and 16, Leaf under pressure, throws, he's got Jackson at the 30. We'll see if he's got the first down. That's where the marker is. He went just above the average that the average on third down, instead of 14-6, he got 15 and a half yards, and that's enough to move him. This ball's well thrown. 
This one he does throw with mostly just arm. But he found the lane, he found the alley, found it, and there's his receiver waiting for it. And Jackson's having a heck of a day finding the creases and the seams in that zone. And Leaf had Suki wigs all over him, too. Look at the hit he takes. We talked about Hewitt taking some shots. If the difference is, Ryan Leaf is 240 pounds. He's more like a linebacker. And at times he looks for people to hit. Trips to the far side this time. Lacks the lone setback and a throw to Jackson. Turns around, ball was there. But incomplete. And coverage by Mel Miller. Yeah, and good coverage by Miller, too. He was in his hip pocket. He was riding him. He's got as much right to the football as the offensive player does, and he used that right to shut him down. Watch, watch the two bumping and grinding here. 25, that's Miller. Now he's in his hip pocket. All right, now look. Here comes the ball. He goes back for it. They both go back for it. And he uses that right hand to sweep it out of there. Well, you saw the good coverage in the secondary to end the first half when they forced the field goal by Washington State. Inside there, the black bouncing outside. Look at his speed as he gets outside. Trying to get to the 20, but he can't quite get there. And let's go quickly to New York once again in John Saunders. Time now for the Burger King play of the day, and it could be none other than this one. Charles Woodson fields the punt, breaks a couple of tackles, and then takes off against the Ohio State Buckeyes. He will not be caught. Takes it for the touchdown, 78 yards. He also had an interception in the end zone, helping to seal the victory for Michigan over Ohio State. John, we didn't see the Heisman pose, though, like Desmond Howard a few years ago. And actually, Ryan Leaf last week. Michael Black straight into the line. He stopped. That's enough for the first down. They'll move the chains. And Washington State now Coogan it again. Has the ball inside the 20. Jim Lambright knows he's up against it right now. He's trying to stop a team that is playing with so much confidence playing with so much efficiency right now they're almost moving at will and Ryan Lee is getting plenty of time and he's got his receivers out there that are wide open and finding the creases right now it's fairly easy for him last seven completions by Leaf have gone for 10 or more yards he's moving the chains almost every time gets hit still almost completes it to Nyan Taylor no Miller out there on the coverage but Leaf went down that time Jason Chorak put the pressure on it you know, defensively right now, Washington's got to start taking a few more chances. I mean, that was a good one where they got short to put some pressure on it. They've got to start playing some games up front, using some twists. They've got all the blitz packages. They've got to go. Here he is right here on the corner, 46. Now he comes through. He's just got to contest with the back. And when he does, Leaf kind of falls on his own. He felt the pressure, tried to backpedal, and his feet slipped. But they've got to come with some, some blitzes now. They've got to put some pressure on Leaf. You know, Leaf expected to see blitzes all day long. He's reading the defense right now, but he really hasn't seen many. And he hasn't been under pressure. Here he sees a blitz now, and they're going to get him. Was the arm coming forward? It's recovered at the 21. And there's a flag on the play, too, but there was no signal from the officials. Well, I'm going to tell you what the flag is. It's going to be motion before the, uh, the play. There was movement. It looked like it was encroachment. And the the pass is called incomplete. And they finally call a pass incomplete. Play was ruled incomplete pass. On the play, there was offsides on the defense. It's a five-yard penalty. Repeat second down. That was big old Jabari Issa, 6'6", 300 pounds, who was in on Ryan Leaf. But again, a mistake goes against the Huskies. Mike Price looks real excitable, doesn't he? <laughs> Just he's another, awfully confident. Another Saturday afternoon. He's having a great time this year coaching these guys, and why not? This is a special group. Coop's 9-1. Still thinking roses. That dream is still very much alive. He's a pencil push on what UCLA does too, and Arizona State next week. Leaf with plenty of time. Flushed out, looking to get the first down. And knocked out to the track right at the 10 yard line by Marcus Harrison, the outside linebacker. You know, the thing is, they're so spread out now, Washington State, that the defense has gotten tentative. Now, watch Chork. Never did they put any pressure this time on Leaf. Why? Well, here comes Chork once.
double team. Still fighting up there with Rainville. Now he's locked on with Black. Still trying to get through. See, they're doing such a great job blocking these guys. Leaf has all day. What saved the play was the coverage in the secondary. And the coverage today by the secondary has been pretty darn good with all this time that Leaf has had to throw. But the test continues. They'll be tested all afternoon. We're going to quit throwing. Third and a long one. Black stops. Goes forward. Should have the first down. He fell across the 10 down to the 9, and that's where the first down marker is. Terry, they were showing run the entire time. You could tell their intentions were to get the first down, to set up a first down so you give Lee four chances at the end zone. They weren't hiding what they were doing that time. I mean, how familiar is this drive, too? We've seen it uh, three times in the, the first half, and now they do it again in the second. After when, the turnover. When you saw Ryan Leaf come up and check off that last time, he wasn't checking out of a run, but he was picking his spot where the run was to go, the side, and he picked the soft spot. And Black got the first down. And, and you mentioned it earlier. That's one of the biggest improvements in Ryan Leaf's game this year. He is a smart quarterback, knowing when to check off, not only from run to pass and vice versa, but where to go with it. And coaches say he has improved immensely that way. Yeah, he's become more of a student. He's reading defenses better. He's coming up to the line. He's seeing what they're giving. He's counting the guys in the box. He's checking out of things that could hurt him. So it's first and goal, just inside the 10-yard line. Three receivers set to the near side and the fourth to the top. Spread it out, running to Black, scored the first time that way. This time Black down inside the five to the three. Harrison in on the tackle. With his offense right now, you don't know where it's going to come from. Well, you could almost tell that time, Leaf was reading the defense. Again, they spread him out, and there were only five guys in the box. Any, anytime you've got five guys or less, six guys and less, you want to run the football right at him. You outnumber him. And that's what he was doing, outnumbering him. Nine plays so far, the number two offense in the nation. They took six minutes and three seconds off on their first drive, the longest drive of the year, and now they're approaching five minutes. Black bounces off a of one, fights his way to the two. The ball is loose in the end zone. And they're scrambling in the end zone. If Washington State has it, and it's anyone other than Black, it comes back to where he was tackled. But we'll see if the Huskies had it, and they're going to call it a touchdown. Now hold on. They call it a touchdown after the ball was knocked loose. Rainville comes up with it. All right, again, there's only five guys in the box, so they try to outnumber them. They come hard off the corner, but look, I thought the play was down. His knee was down, but the ball turned loose. Boy, Washington got it first, and then they just wrestled it away from him. It was a delayed call, Timmy, too, in terms of the ball even being loose. I thought he was down, too. And we should mention early throughout the first half, there have been whistles going off in the entire stadium, so they've asked people not to blow those, but there is a flag now on the extra point. Mike Price... Got to love what his offense has done so far. They've dominated this game. You look across that line of scrimmage, you got Rainbow is 305, McAdoo's 300, Lee Harris is 270, then you got Withrow's 280, and McShane's 305. So, I mean, they're big, strong, talented guys up front. Then you send your receivers way out, and they just muscle you. The try was good. After the try, dead ball, personal foul on the offense. 15-yard penalty was forced on the kickoff. So 24-7, the Cougars trying to get back to the Rose Bowl for the first time in 67 years, and the break's going their way. Pack was down. His knee's going to hit before that ball ever comes loose. Towns got him wrapped up. He's down right there, they say, but the officials say, no, look, that ball's loose. There it is. And so they recovered it in the end zone. It's a touchdown. Moving back after the penalty, so they get a good return here for the Huskies. And then bringing it out across the 45 up to the 47-yard line. So good field position, at least for Brock Heward now, as they start this drive. But another impressive one for the Cougars. Well, and now Washington has to change its game plan a little bit. Now it does start thinking about 
playing against the clock. They're down 24 to 7, and here we are now well into the third quarter. They've got to start picking up the tempo a little bit if they're going to get back into things. So to do that, you change your plays a little bit. You're not as conservative. You're not running as much, trying to set up the run. And don't forget, at the conclusion of today's game, we'll select the Chevrolet most valuable player of the game from each team. To date, Chevrolet has awarded over $6.5 million in the scholarship funds of America's colleges and universities. Ryan Leaf uh, may have an upper hand so far on that one. Payton the catch across midfield to the 48. Let's find out what's going on with the Trojans and the Bruins from John Saunders. Things may just be shaking out Washington State's way. UCLA against USC. Cade McNown, 37 yards to Mike Grebe. Third touchdown pass of the day for McNown. 28-21. UCLA has the lead, but they need help where you guys are. Terry. All right, John. So the Bruins doing their part for the Cougars right now. Maurice Shaw bouncing, spinning, getting down to the 40, but there's a flag back at the 45. Yeah, but I think John's right. You know, <laughs> Washington's not helping the Bruins at all. Bob Toledo's hoping that Washington could win this thing today. Right now, they're finding themselves in a pretty deep hole. Perception is reality. If you're a Cougar fan, that's your perception right now. Tripping on the offense at the 15-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Repeat second down. Mm. Well, the mistakes Look early at, on against Washington State. Look at the, Jim just looks at him and says man. tripping and laughs. I mean, you know, everything... Everything that could go wrong today has gone wrong for his club. Now, Brock Hewitt has brought them back before. A year ago in this game, it was Ryan Leaf doing the comeback bidding, bringing his team back. And, of course, the overtime game a year ago, Washington has won six of the last eight in the Apple Cup. But now it's up to Hewitt to try to bring back the Huskies. Contact from the defensive line. This one's complete though to the tight end Cleveland. A big gain inside the 40 down to the 39. Boy, you've got to like that. It was the defense that jumped offside, so it's defensive offsides. They'll decline that and they'll take the first down with Cleveland. And Cleveland's had a good day. He's been out with that injury, the sprained knee that he suffered against Oregon. Offsides on the defense, decline. First down. So the Huskies have some things going now. Bender jumped across too early. And then Cleveland does a nice job of, of not stopping. As a matter of fact, he breaks the tackle and goes and picks up the first. Cameron Cleveland is the guy the pros love. The guy's 6'4", 275-pound senior, and runs like a tailback. So first down inside the 40-yard line. Reed in motion. Maurice Shaw, and there goes movement again. Good, a free play going to the end zone. Touchdown! Fred Coleman on the catch. Don't count this offense out. Offside for the defense declining. Touchdown. It looked like it was Salusa again. It came across defensively. And again, Washington doesn't stop. They carry out the play and score. Terrific play by Coleman. You see, he's got a little bit of leverage on Jackson, slides behind him, and Hewitt laid it out there, put air under it, let him run under it, perfectly thrown. Coleman with a good pattern, and bingo. The Huskies are on the board. Seventh touchdown catch of the year for Fred Coleman, the senior out of Tyler, Texas. And Washington back in this one. Glenn's on for the extra point. Gets it through that right side. So new life for the Huskies here in Seattle. How about that? And for Brock Hewitt. Getting knocked down the entire first half. The interceptions, but he's bringing it back. Step of Brock Hewitt now after the touchdown pass to Fred Coleman. It's a 10-point game. And the key is they didn't use much of the clock. Keep in mind, this is a team that will take chances. Look at this. 13 onside kicks, 11 recovered. However, right now is not the time I don't think that they're going to do it. I think they're going to kick it deep. You still have too much time in the ball game, but just to be aware of it. Lentz is kicked. He kicked one out of bounds earlier, going towards that near sideline. McKenzie on the return now. Gets a block from Taylor. And brought down out at the 18. There's a flag out at the 30-yard line. 
Well, America's biggest road show rolls into College Station live Friday at 11 a.m. Eastern time. Texas at Texas A&M. That'll be a good one. And then the Nebraska Cornhuskers, they hope to keep it rolling. Number three in the country against the Buffaloes of Colorado. Then it's the Nittany Lions. Number six taking on Michigan State. Good one out of the Big Ten. And we'll be at Georgia and Georgia Tech. The rivalries continue. Holding against uh, Washington State. Another penalty hurts them, moves them back. So Leaf will start with poor field position here. Quick strike, 50 seconds taken off the clock, and that is it. Red Coleman, the 38-yard touchdown catch. And that is exactly what Washington needed. You talked about it, Timmy. They needed to get something going in the air. Yeah, but the Huskies need a defensive stop here. They've got State backed up inside their own 10. For the first time in a long time, you can hear the crowd now. Not spread out as much, just two wides. Leaf gives it to Black, nowhere to go. Stopped after a gain of maybe a yard. Lewis Johnson, what's going on down on the sideline? Hey guys, Husky linebacker coach Scott Pallor has instilled a sense of urgency for his defense. He wants these guys now to go for the ball, go for the picks, that type of thing. But that could create a problem because they have missed a lot of tackles this year. Now he told his guys one other thing. He said, stop checking off on defense. Whatever we call initially, stay with it. Lester Towns has been active all day long. He's had a big game. Leaf completes, got Jackson trying to get the first down. He powers his way across the 20, and they'll move the chains. Mel Miller on the stop. Mel Miller was a little bit tentative that time. He had him backed up. I don't know why he wasn't being more aggressive. And Again, there is, there's a penalty flag, yeah. though. It's on the opposite side of the field, it's on the 19-yard line. We've had our share of yellow hankies today. Holding on the defense, decline. First and ten. You know who they called that on out there? They called it on Jermaine Smith. The cornerback was locked on man for man on the back side. And they got him for hold. Smith, the sophomore out of Simi Valley, California. And maybe the best man for man coverage athlete in that secondary for the Huskies. First down for Leaf, though. Under pressure, Jensen oh. knocks him silly. Ho! Oh. Jerry Jensen on a dead run. They got the jump. They came backside. Jensen has nobody to block him, and he's locked on like a heat-seeking missile. Boy, that's a good play by Jensen, and again, it backs him up, and it brings down second and long. Five and a half sacks on the year for Jensen, having a terrific season for the Huskies. Third in the Pac-10, this Husky defense. And Washington in motion now. Leaf, plenty of time initially, but now under pressure. Going to throw it out, and incomplete. McKenzie was there, but he threw behind him, and now there's a flag behind the line of scrimmage. They still got a lick on Ryan Leaf. They also got a lick on McKenzie, too, on the sidelines, even though the ball wasn't catchable. This may back up Washington State even more. They may call holding back here. It was Chorak who was racing to get the lead. Now the face mask. The personal was, foul face mask. He was holding the face mask. <laughs> It's never good, but that's really bad. Watch Corey Withrow. Corey Withrow right here. Watch him go up to the face mask. See his left hand, and then he just yanks at it. yard face mask penalty on the offense. Half the distance from the spot of the foul. Repeat second down. Jeremiah Farms, number four, is the one that hit Leaf. And then after that, Leaf threw the ball, and it was McKenzie that took a lick. So Purple Jersey starting to fly around, and now they've got him backed up inside the five. This is where you have to be real careful if you're Ryan Leaf. 
Turnovers have been a huge part of this game, but they've come off of Brock Hewitt passes. And Terry, I think it's the opposite of defense. I don't think you're careful. You've got to be aggressive here. Straight ahead and running goes Black. Going to get out to the five. That's it. Not much room at all. Jabari Issa wrapped him up. Yeah, I see exactly what you said. They're being careful. Don't want to turn the ball over down here. You want to give Ryan Leaf a little room to, to maneuver, but it's still third down and forever. They've got to get all the way from the five up to the 34-yard line to get a first down. Average yards to go on third down, almost 13. Third and 28. Leaf, the quick drop, has time. Over the middle, look out! Stop by Parrish. Inside the 10. Still on his feet. Going to get to the end zone with the dive. We got a brand new ball game here at Husky Stadium. Tony Parrish bringing it back 32 yards to the end zone. Whole stadium is rocking. Leaf never saw Parrish. He was playing free. He was a free safety playing deep center field up by the 35 where they had to get the first, and he never saw him. Interception number four on the year for Tony Parrish. They tack on the extra point. Guess what? This one no longer belongs to the Cougars. 24 to 21, and we got a world of time left. Well, at least it's not locked up. They've turned over a new leaf. 24 21, and this time Leaf is the guy that makes a mistake. Look at number seven. Ryan Leaf never saw him. He was playing free safety, deep center, up by the first down marker. As soon as Leaf looked that way and released it, he broke with the ball, and Parrish made the pick. Look at him. He's locked on that area. He never comes off where he's going to throw. So his eyes took Parrish to the ball, and he made the interception. Well, we mentioned you have to be careful in that part of the field, but that's not in Ryan Leaf's makeup. He's trying to make the big play, but that time not making the good read. The four-play drive moments ago by Brock Hewitt in Washington bringing them back with a touchdown, and now another one on the interception by Parrish. Same expression from Mike Price as he's had all game. And everyone's pumped up now. Even Lentz, who kicks it to the end zone and out. Well, ABC Sports presentation of college football brought to you by Chevrolet Trucks, the most dependable, longest-lasting trucks on the road. Marriott Hotels, Resorts, and Suites. We believe when you're comfortable, you can do anything. Domino's, delivering a million smiles a day. And Bud Light, if you want great taste that won't fill you up, never lets you down. Make it a Bud Light. Rashad Sheehy. A senior, the captain, unable to play today, torn ligament in his knee. The emotions, it must be a kaleidoscope of emotions he's going through right now. Biggest cheerleader on the sideline right now here at Husky Stadium. Leaf on the roll, he's dangerous. Throws to Tim's double coverage. Miller was all over him, actually had a hand on the middle of his back. And right in front of the Cougars' sideline, they're calling for interference. Ryan Lee passes for 330 yards a game. He's at 235 right now, but he's just thrown in interception, so he's below his average, well below his average, 100 yards below his average. And you have to wonder right now what the defense is doing a little bit differently. Well, they're playing more aggressively on the corners. They're hiding the free safety occasionally, and they're bringing Jensen off the corner. You know, Cade McNown passed for 320 yards and three touchdowns against Washington last week. You'd think uh, the defenders would know that and be bringing it. Leaf was 11 out of 12 in one span in this game. Now he's two out of his last eight. Going to give it to Black. Nowhere to run. His Husky defense taking it to a different level. Now tomorrow on The Wonderful World of Disney, the network premiere of one of the best holiday movies ever. Tim Allen stars in The Santa Claus. 
Not the winner, Timothy Hutton, then has to put the pieces of his life together, or he'll be dead by midnight. ABC World Premiere Movie, tomorrow night on ABC. The Apple Cup, always important in this state, but with national implications this year. Cougars trying to go to the Rose Bowl. Hussey's trying to keep him out. Leaf throwing back. McKenzie with the catch. Almost wrapped up. Gets away out to the 38-yard line. That's a first down. And now a flag comes in late. I think it's a face mask right at the end of that play. And that was a late flag. Because the face mask actually happened about 10 yards before that. There's another one of those situations, though, where it was third down and 10, and Washington came with only a four-man rush. Dropped everybody else off. So Leaf had plenty of time to throw. During the run, five-yard face mask on the defense. Five-yard penalty from the end of the run. First down. Lester Towns, Towns upset. He was yelling at the players there on the sidelines, too. He's the guy that got the hand up, and the flag was so late, he was actually, you could almost read his body language, like Mike, Mike Price was making the call. Turnover's the story. Four and 24 points on the board for Washington State off the four turnovers by Washington. But the one you see was a big one. And it turned the momentum around in this game. Leaf gets to Black. Makes his way actually into his own offensive lineman and then stopped by a couple of Huskies right at midfield. Suki that Wiggs. time where Jeremiah Farms came from behind and actually pushed the runner forward. And Timmy Suki Weeks, we get word, is out right now with a stinger. With a neck injury, at least right now, keeping him out. And this is a Husky defense that can't afford any, any injuries. Lead straight drop on second and five. Throwing it up for Jackson. He's got it in front of Miller. Clear sailing to the end zone. Cougars come back with six of their own. You know that's the exact same thing that happened to Mel Miller by Jackson before. He had great coverage, but he has a difficult time locating the football. He has to understand that the sideline there is like another defender. Look, he's riding his hip. All he's got to do is force him more to the sideline. But watch, he's right there. 25 is right there, but has a tough time locating the football. And so Jackson makes the catch and goes right on into the end zone. Chris Jackson had one early in the game, and now he puts another one up there. 50 yards well, from got, Leaf to Jackson. Gotta love Ryan Leaf. Gotta love this game. Huskies fight back to get within three. Don't relax. Ryan Leaf is in the ballpark. To the air to Jackson, 50 yards, and we've got a 31-21 game. All of a sudden, wow. Turn. Going back and forth. Ryan Leaf going 50 yards to the end zone to Chris Jackson. Brock Hewitt took him on a four-play drive moments ago, and then the interception by Paris to the end zone again. This one a long way from being over. Garzinka back deep along with Payton. Mills kick. Payton three yards deep, going to bring it out. Trying to get to the sideline, now the cutback. Good return out to the 35. They'll start from there. Well, more great action on ESPN. Tonight, 7.30 Eastern time, 4.30 Pacific. Alabama and Auburn, they don't like each other a whole lot. More rivalries. And then a battle in the WAC. Colorado State trying to win this game to get the WAC championship game. All tonight on ESPN. Look at Brock Hewitt. He's got to maintain composure. He's throwing those four interceptions you see there on the right. His last success, I think, was going to help rebuild the confidence. He was struggling there for a while. It looked like he wasn't into a rhythm. He's got to come back now, keep that same kind of poise that he had in the last drive. Mike Reed in motion. Maurice Shaw in the backfield. Quick drop for Hewitt. Throws behind Jerome Payton. Now, Payton and Coleman, the two favorite targets for Brock Hewitt. Warren Hooker, also a guy who 
you know about. He's got world-class speed, fastest guy coming out of high school a year ago, but he's been banged up with a knee injury that he suffered a week ago against UCLA. Coleman caught a touchdown pass earlier. But it brings up second and ten, and they operate out of the eye. And to give it to the upback, Green powers his way ahead for about three. Leon Bender met him right at the line of scrimmage. Yeah, you talked about what a big game Coleman hat is having, and he is, but Payton's a guy that surprised me. He came in with 64 receptions, most productive receiver in Husker history, and they haven't gotten him as involved as I thought they would. And here's that talented transfer from Nova Scotia, Acadia University. Reminds uh, a lot of people of Gary Clark, the way he goes across the middle, and he'll make those catches across the middle. Gary Conklin, who's a grad assistant here, played for the Redskins. He says, yeah, he's just like Gary Clark. Great drop for Hewitt and plenty of time. Yes, Got a man yes, wide yes, open yes. in midfield, and the catch made by Coleman, enough for the first down. And Hewitt, you talked about the rhythm that has started. Seems to be in it. Hewitt keeps going back to the Texas Twister. Watch this now. He's going to the five-step drop. Going three and five step. Very rarely do you see him go the seven step drop because it's taking too much time and they're getting too much pressure on him. But look, they're playing soft on him. Jackson gave him a lot of cushion. He got it out to Coleman and Coleman just stopped the clock again. 2.56 to go third period. Coleman in motion this time. Play action, Hewitt. Bouncing out, looking for room. Looking for a receiver. He got taken with a catch at the 30 yard line. And there are two flags on the play. I'm telling you, they may call pass interference on Payton. And again, it was the sideline of Washington State making the call all over the officials. Payton may have been out of bounds on that route. Well, you can't go out and come back in. That's illegal. Right. Let's take a look. Let's. All right, here's Payton now. He's trying to. He sees Hewitt scrambling. He's out of bounds. Ineligible yep. receiver. The receiver went out of bounds on his own. Came back in with the first to ten to touch the ball. The result of the, is there is no yardage penalty, but it's a loss of down. It was second down. And what he said is critical. He went out on his own. If the defender had pushed him back, he has every right to come back in bounds and make that catch. But if he goes out without being touched or forced, then it's illegal. It's also a loss of down. Well, Jim Lambright just talking to him in his office yesterday. He got emotional talking about this game and the seniors and what this class has meant to him and to the University of Washington. Sticking by him when the sanctions were announced and went on probation, playing their final game here at Husky Stadium. This caught made, catch made by Cameron Cleland. Fourth catch of the afternoon, and Timmy, he's a guy who's been hurt, and uh, they've gone to him quite often. Yeah, and, and Todd Nelson right there, you see Nelson. He's got to be wondering, hey, what do I have to do to stop this guy? I mean, Cleveland's huge at 275. We told you that. When Nelson had good coverage, was actually riding his back, Cleveland still made the catch and picked up five. Illegal or legal, you can't stop it. Gleason, who took a shot from Cleveland early in the game, too. Quick drop, quick throw, complete. At the 32, first down, Jerome Payton on the catch. See how they're doing it, Terry? It's the three-step drop and release it. Then when you run the little slant pattern, those are hard to stop for any cornerback. They're keeping him in a rhythm where he's going three-step or five-step, but very rarely is he going to seven where they can get the pressure on him. Watch this. One, two, set, boom. Release it, and there's your slide pattern. And watch this. Now, Payton just comes in. He's got inside leverage. That's hard to stop, especially that time they were playing a zone. Virtually impossible. Gain of 12 and a much different approach than they had early in the game when they were taking that deep drop and looking deep. And got burned by the interception. Ray Shaw, big hole, first through. And tackled by Thompson. He may have saved a touchdown. Thompson's hurt. And it looks like his shoulder. I think he sacrificed his shoulder making that tackle. That's a load to try to bring down, too, if you're Lamont Thompson, who weighs about 183 pounds. Yep. Shaw goes 215, 220. Shaw almost ran away with his arm. <laughs> That's why his shoulder hurts now, really. I mean, he you're right. He saved the touchdown or he was gone.
So they work on Lamont Thompson, the freshman, who's had a couple of interceptions. got four interceptions in his last two days. Watch Benji Olsen. Now, these are your two guards. They've been pulling these guys all day. Now, watch what they do with Benji Olsen, number 76. Sam, all right, stop it right there. Here comes your linebacker. Here comes Olsen. It's going to knock him loose. Boom, locks on him, knocks him out of the way, and Shaw takes it up underneath. Benji Olsen, quiet, unassuming guy, 310 pounds. You wonder, how can a guy named 310 pounds be named Benji? <laughs> but his name's Benjamin Dempsey Olsen. Listen to this. At 10 years old, he was 6 feet, 200 pounds. Five years later, he grew three inches and gained 40 pounds. He was put on high school roly-poly squad for fat guys. Then he thinned down, and now he's bench pressing 425 pounds. Gentle Ben off the field, maybe. Brad Hutt, the guard, the lead blocker. There goes Shaw bouncing outside, fighting his way all the way down to the 11. Again, flags on the play. And we'll see what they're all about. I feel like I've said that more than I've said anything else today. Offsides on the defense. Five-yard penalty. Keep first down. He's been going on a hard count all day. Watch Hewitt's head. Now, just watch him bob. See, when he bobs, they come. It's that hard count. He's giving them a good hard count like it's like that's the one. Giving them the old hut, hut, hut. And when he does that, they're jumping. 13 penalties on the day. 13. Look at that. They had six before we had about five minutes off the clock. They'd like to score by the end of this quarter. They've got 35 seconds left in the third. They're down 10. Hewitt picking it up and under throws Payton right at the first down marker. UCLA with a 31-21 lead over USC at the LA Coliseum. Same as our score. That game in the fourth quarter, though. Had a look there of the play being signaled in by the second team quarterback, Marcus Tuiasa Sopo. And boy, Tuiasa Sopo, the freshman, what a game he had against Nebraska when Hewitt got hurt. Terrific talent. Mike Price hasn't changed his expression all afternoon. Guess what? A couple of flags. For the staff, ball start on the offense. Five yard penalty, no second down. Ninth penalty of the day against Washington. Again, Washington State trying to get to the Rose Bowl for the first time since 1931. They're nine and one at this point. If they win here and UCLA beats USC or Arizona State wins, or excuse me, loses to Arizona next week, they go. If Washington State loses, they need all three to lose. Exciting, though, for Washington State, isn't it? Thir 67 years, 67 since the school's been there for the Rose Bowl. You're on the verge of something like that. If you're Mike Price, you can't tell me that it's not in your mind and you're just thinking about the game. Swing pass, they set up the screen. The big Mike Reed inside the 10. Busts all the way down to the end zone. Touchdown. What a run once he got the football. He brought about three defenders with him. Set up so well and sold by Heward. Watch the linebackers as he fakes the run. They're still looking for the ball. Now he looks over the middle and then gets it out. Now here comes Reed, 36. Now watch his determination to get to the end zone. He just runs over Jackson, number two, and reaches out for the score. Extra point is good, and the Huskies come back with a drive of their own after the 50-yard strike by Leaf. A longer drive by Jim Lambright, Steve. Combination of everybody pulling together, making things work. They get a good push up up top. Now watch Crute 77 hanging with his guy. That's more the linebacker. That was just enough for Reed to get off his butt and then from the five, take it in airborne. Ray Jackson, the quarterback, saying, I'm not going to try this again. Mike Reed going about 215. There was no way you're going to keep him out of that end zone. They use him like an H-back, what they call the H-back, which is like a motion tight end. Combination tight end fullback. And I'm telling you, that was a power run. 
31 to 28 with 15 seconds left until the end of the third quarter. Whatever you do in between quarters, do it quickly. You don't want to miss any of this. Be right back. Keep it right here now. Evan McKenzie. And they kick away from him. That's Nyan Taylor. Back at his own seven yard line. Looking to come all the way across the field. Better start north and south. Drilled at the 17 yard line. Spent a lot of time going east and west, bringing that one back. You know what Washington's saying? Washington is saying if the Cougars go into the Rose Bowl, they're going to have to earn it. We're not going to give it to them. And one of the big guys that's been hot all day has been Jackson. They've had a tough time stopping Chris Jackson. Look at This time, Butler can't stop him. Paris misses the tackle. Jackson carries it in. Then in this half, they did the same thing. They threw it high, let him run under it. Again, there's your guy. Miller can't seem to stop him, can't locate the ball, and Jackson carries it in again. They've really had a tough time with him this afternoon. And there's a penalty on the kickoff. There's a flag back at the 43. The kicking team's 43. Matt Flood has been a busy man today. So a couple of penalties, including the personal foul. I'm not sure Jim understands. On the kickoff, the illegal formation on the kicking team is declined. After the play, dead ball, personal foul on the kicking team, 15-yard penalty from the end of the run, first and 10, Washington State. Now that's just stupid. The play had ended, and somebody had a personal foul called on him. That'll drive Jim nuts, too, because that's the kind of thing that'll kill you. There's no reason for that. Oh, you fight your way back, too, to get back into this thing. You're only down three right now. And quickly, let's get a Trojan Bruin update from John Saunders again. John? Well, Terry, it's working out the way Washington State would hope, I would think. UCLA against USC. John Fox to the end zone, but it's picked off by Javelin Gidry. And UCLA does not give up the seven, still leading by ten. Terry? Still a ways to go in that one at the Coliseum. Cougar fans like it. They take over here. They're going to run the reverse to Tibbs. Needs a block. Gets one, but a little bit late, up to the 38-yard line. Jensen did a nice job of containing. Well, he really did. He fought off the blocker, slowed down the runner, waited for pursuit. So the third quarter is over. We're heading to the fourth. We'll be back after this message and a word from our ABC stations. Terry Gannon, Tim Brandt, Lewis Johnson here at the Apple Cup, 97. The fourth quarter getting underway in the three-point lead by the Cougars. Dream season still alive. Complete goes down across midfield to the 48-yard line of Washington. Chris Jackson, his favorite target today. Every time I see Lee throw, I'm just amazed. I mean, the guy has a rifle hanging from his shoulder. And he's so confident in everything he does. But coming in, we talked about Washington trying to rattle him today and, and trying to make him lose his cool. He had the one interception, but it hasn't happened. No, he's maintained his composure. Played well. Four receivers set, three of them to the near side. Leaf going to give it inside, though, to Black. Got a lot of room. They ran right past the linebacker. Breaks outside. Got a chance. Knocked down at the 10-yard line. Inside the 10. Michael Black with a huge run. If you're going to go ahead and designate everybody in there, your nickel and dime packages to stop the pass, you don't have enough bodies to stop this guy. Look at this. Once he gets into the secondary, there's one man to beat. It's Towns. Once he runs by Towns, then everybody has to give up their guys, get away from the blocks, and get over and try to save him. Look at this, though. He tiptoes down that line like he's tight rope, uh, rope walking. He's got great speed. And look at his body control. Look once he gets by this line. Look how he stays in. Ran it 37 yards right 
into our cameraman. All the way down to the 11. Well, three receivers to the far side now. And Black the lone setback once again. Leaf on first down, going to blow it dead. And here come the Yellow Hankies again. I think there was movement on the right side of the line at one point. May have been Ryan McShane. Before the snap, ball start on the offense. Five yard penalty. Repeat first down. Mm. Well, the one time we call his name and we point out that he moved on the right side of the line. Not fun being an offensive lineman, but Mike Price now in the game of his life coming in. The game of all of these players' careers for Washington State with the opportunity that's in front of them. They had the lead 24-7. It's 31-28. Everybody in this stadium now on their feet. Win sets. Tips incomplete. And Washington, the intended receiver, but it was tipped by Jensen. What a game Jensen is playing. You know, he showed blitz and then dropped off. And once he got back, Leaf never saw it. Watch this. 40's on the right hand of your screen. Now, he's dropping back. Leaf will go. He'll look to that side. He throws, and look, there's 40 punching the ball up in the air over the receiver's head. Watch well, Suki Wiggs in on Leaf, too. Boy, everybody says Jensen's having a great year. 76 tackles, 16 of those for losses, five sacks, two interceptions, and a whole lot of disruptions, and that was a disruption. Second and 15. Ryan wants to change it at the line. Has time, throws, almost picked off again. Tony Parrish was there, and he read it again, just like he did when he brought it back to the end zone causing some problems, didn't he? They had him in free safety again, playing center field, playing the middle of the whole field, and then just reading. Coaches love Parrish. I mean, they love his attitude. They love the way he plays. They say to play in the NFL, they have to get a little more consistent. But right now, they're hiding back there. Now watch number seven. As soon as he goes that way, he breaks on the ball and almost had the interception. Probably should have had it. He yeah. was there. He worked hard enough to get it. All-Pac-10 a year ago, preseason All-American in many of the publications. Huge third down play coming up. A lot of contact. Jackson, the intended receiver, they're going to call it on Miller. He came right over his back. Miller better be careful. He just bumped the official. And they're getting him out of the way in a hurry. His teammates came over just ripped him away. Well, there's no question about the contact. Try to come right through Chris Jackson. He's got to be careful. He walked right up and bumped the official chested him. Pass interference on the defense. It's a spot foul. First and ten. First and goal. And spot of the foul. Watch the top of your screen. These are the guys that have been battling the whole time. They're battling now. Now once the ball comes, he runs right through his back to get to it. And the flag came out immediately. Miller went right through his back. All right, now watch him. Now here comes the official. Now watch. He actually did hit him, and the official came back. The official got in his face. Lucky there wasn't another flag, but it can't be a whole lot worse than this right now for Washington trying to stop Washington State. It's first and goal inside the five. Screen over the middle. A pass over the middle to Love Jefferson. That's a dangerous throw. Yeah, it was. Issa got a hand on it. Issa's the, uh, the nose tackle, the middle guard there. Well, that's a call that if you're Mike Price, a lot of bad things can happen. I'm just glad none of them did. Or the least of all evils, at least, happened the incomplete pass. Second and goal. Opening moments in the fourth quarter. Black straight ahead gets down to the goal line, but stopped right there. Lester Towns wrapped him up. Jensen in on it, too. Yeah, we talked about Jensen. How about the game Towns is having? Yeah. Towns being very active. Again, they showed three wide receivers, so Towns this time is locked onto the ball carrier. 
Here comes 17 into your screen. Boom. He hits him low. Jensen hits him high. You can hear the noise build on third and goal. Watch the quarterback sneak. Straight over the top. Waiting for the signal. Oh, you know what? I didn't think he got in. You get the but signal to him. from the players first and then the official. No good. They cannot give him that touchdown. You know, His elbow hit way before his ball crossed the goal line. He was down. They're giving him the touchdown. That's a great play by Ryan Leaf. Get off the field. Just get off the field. Yeah, if, there's a, if there's a discussion with the officials, let them decide it. You act like it's a done deal. This whole offense got off the field right away. And they're still talking about it. That was close. I... There was a fumble on the play before the player went into the end zone. However, the offensive player who fumbled it recovered into the end zone. It's only third down, therefore it is a touchdown. Okay, yeah, and that's and that's the rule, and that's the one that wasn't real clear earlier. And if it's only third down, it's not fourth down. You can recover, someone else can recover your fumble in the end. And that's and why so. I didn't think he got in. Now you watch when he hits right here, he'll hit right about the one foot line, and the ball's out. See his hip hit? All right now the ball's not across the end zone, but it rolled on in, he pulled it in, touchdown. Great play by Lee. And Nell hooks it just inside the upright and through. So Ryan Leaf having a huge day in this Apple Cup, trying to get to the Rose Bowl, and right now the Cougars up by 10. College football Saturday. LA Coliseum, and it's 31 21 UCLA right now, and we are here in Seattle, 38 28 Washington State. Race for the Roses. But you can see USC's got a pretty good drive going, and they're trying to throw into the end zone while Jim Lamp right here is just trying to put a stop on what has just been a flood, 38 28, and they're cooking it. Washington State trying to get to the Rose Bowl. And a UCLA win. And a win here against Washington. Lindell kicking it deep. Payton, seven yards deep, going to take it to one knee. They'll bring it out to the 20. Well, tomorrow at 1 o'clock Eastern, 12 Central and Pacific, the finals of the Chase Championships. And that matchup is set. Yana Novotna and Mary Pierce. And then at 4 o'clock Eastern, 3 Central and Pacific, the final round of the ITT LPGA Tour Championship. Annika Sorenstam and the top 30 money winners compete all tomorrow right here on ABC. What a setting this is, too. Go, 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 go. Rain is held off. Temperature around 50 degrees at least at kickoff. And here we are in the fourth game in question. Ewart going to go deep up the near sideline and a nice play by Coleman actually to come back and make sure that one wasn't intercepted. It's incredible to me that every time Brock Hewer tries to throw deep, he either gets it picked off or almost picked off. They've got the outside bracketed pretty well. Look at this coverage. I mean, Jackson, Ray Jackson right here, using the sideline to, and just using his body to force him there, and he almost makes the interception. You can't play that any better. Well, you've got that sideline to help you. Take your body, play it inside out, try to force the guy into that sideline so that you're between the receiver and the ball. Numbers on Brock Hewitt, the big one, number four in terms of interceptions. Three in the first half. Going to run it to the right side. Look at Shaw in the big hole. Crush the 35 to the 36. Maurice Shaw, the sophomore out of Sacramento. Boy, what a person he is. Maurice Shaw, 20-year-old. He became a man before his time. Raised himself 
His parents divorced. His dad went to Philadelphia. His mom, as Maurice said, was an alcoholic, and he never even knew where she was, doesn't know where she is now. 5'9", 187 pounds in a fourth grade. Now he's chiseled himself into an athlete. He's quite a guy. And only a sophomore. Had a hamstring injury actually earlier in the week. Slowed him a bit, but it doesn't look like it's affecting him today. He looked a great job, a great throw. The ball is loose at the 42-yard line. Fred Coleman arguing now that he made the catch and got it back. You know, it is it has he if he holds on to this football, it's a touchdown. The defender actually right. fell down. He's saying he made the catch and then and then lost it. They're saying it was incomplete. The pass is ruled incomplete. But the defender fell down. If he makes this catch, he's got a clear path. Watch this. Now look at the white jersey. He falls. He makes this catch. He's gone. And he should have made the catch. He really should have. And yeah. I think I think he was reading the headlines and not watching the football. Looking at six before he had the, the catch. 12.30. Left to go here in Seattle. Trips to the far side. Going to give it to Shaw, though. Tough running across the 40 up to the 42. But he puts his head down. He may not have the speed, the breakaway speed of Rashawn Sheehy, but when he runs up the middle, you're going to feel it. Sheehy, the cheerleader early on this afternoon, still out with the injury. Yeah, he's had an injury play career, but when he's out of the game, they don't run nearly as well. They're inconsistent with the running game. Less than 100 yards on the ground. Third and three, you can hear the Washington State fans now in the end zone, bringing it up, wanting to stop right now. Ewart over the middle to his tight end. Cleveland got a first down on the catch and another flag. It looked like he was held before he made the catch by Gleason. And again, he can't stop him, even though he's all on, on his back and holding him and everything else. Had a great game, hadn't he? That's the guy holding. that big, that athletic. And when I say athletic, I mean, the guy's 275 pounds. I keep saying that, but he moves like such a smaller man. Soccer player in high school. And there's so many people that play football, basketball, who played Holding soccer. on the defense. Ten-yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic first down. And who are great athletes. Yeah, and the guy's so big, I think what they're doing, watch, here he is. Watch, see if they don't hold him when he comes off the line. All right, he comes off the... All right, now here he is. Look, see, the linebacker locks on to him. Just pulls his jersey. <laughs> Still can't stop him. Irish with a victory today. They move the change. It's first and ten just inside Cougar territory. They operate out of the eye this time. Shaw wrapped up behind the line of scrimmage, brought down. He's going to lose a couple. Bender was in on him, and so was Shane Doyle. He got there first. What a great story this is for the Cougs. I mean, they're trying to hold on, trying to go to the Rose Bowl. Look at the white jerseys. I mean, they're just busting through there. They're starting a new line of scrimmage a yard deep in the backfield. If you play like that, you're going to win football games. They dominated the line of scrimmage that time. Second and 12 now for Hewitt. Quick drop throws, dangerous pass. Warren Cola was looking at that one and looking to take it back all the way. Hey, Lewis Johnson, what's going on with Leon Bender? Well, guys, he's been giving speeches down here on the sideline. It's been pretty wild. You know, he's a defensive tackle, and before they went out on the field a few moments ago, he had a little chat with his guys. He said, gentlemen, this fourth quarter is why we stayed in Pullman all summer working for this game. He said the Huskies have been talking all, all year about championships, about a Rose Bowl. But this fourth quarter is what it's all about. And let me tell you, that was the edited version. <laughs> well, you know, I don't blame it. The season began, everybody said, hey, this the Husky team's going to the Rose Bowl. They're number one in the country. Well, now it's Washington State that's turned the tables. Here come the blitz. Ewan picks it up. Goes. What a catch inside the 30. Payton makes the grab, and I'm not sure how. 
you know, catch, and that's the most impressive one. Kerry, now I see what Kerry Conklin's talking about. He says he reminds you of Gary Clark. There's another flag down, but I'm telling you, this is a great catch even if they wave it off. Watch how he goes after this Holding ball. On the offense. Here's the defender. Now look how it is reached and how it stays in his gloves. Oh, that's a tremendous oh. grab, even though it's waved off. They're going to bring it back. They call the holding penalty against Washington, and it wipes out that catch. He could set a record here for penalties. Yeah, Jim Lambright's club has had some major penalties this afternoon. Not as many as Washington State, but that one's huge. They're going to place it down at the... 32-yard line, just outside. Called that hold on Tony Coates. So it's third and a bus ride now. Reed in motion. They're coming after him again. York gets rid of it quickly. Got Peyton one-on-one. -on -one. Ball was thrown to the inside. I gotta tell you, that guy right there, Ray Jackson, has put on a clinic today on coverage. I mean, he has had some of the best man-to-man -man coverage I've seen this year in college football. He is outstanding at just locking on a guy, getting in his hip pocket, running with him, funneling him, using the sidelines, and not giving him a chance to get to the football. And for the first time, we see a Washington punt. Is that not incredible? First time this afternoon. This one taken by Tim's going to run back and then is swarmed under at the 26 yard line. So it's 38 to 28, the Cougars. And guess what? UCLA with a win down at the LA Coliseum against the USC Trojans. So if Washington State wins, they're going to Pasadena for the first time since 31. We go to the scene at the LA Coliseum. UCLA with a 31 to 24 win over the Trojans. John Robinson. Bob Toledo walking off for the seventh year in a row. The Bruins have defeated the Trojans. And that means Washington State now. With 9.54 to go, they're nine minutes and 54 seconds away from going to the Rose Bowl for the first time in 67 years. Very few of those players, less than a handful around who played on that team. Trying to make history here in the last... Nine minutes and 50 seconds. Michael Black straight ahead. He's had a big day. Black picks up three more yards. He now has 26 carries, 130 yards. Well, you mentioned that at the top of our telecast, Timmy, the fact that with this spread offense, when they spread things out, really opens things up for Black, and he's gotten some one-on-one -on -one situations with a linebacker where he's blown right by him. Yeah, I really felt coming into this game that he was going to have a huge game. He averages over five yards a carry. He put him on that short corner against his defense. I knew he was going to have big yards. He's up to 130. He's still going. He's going to throw. Over the middle, Washington can't make the catch. They're going to throw a flag again. I don't... Miller, I don't agree with that one at all. Mel Miller, who was called for the interference on the last drive, again, the coverage man. Yeah, but I think this time he is really going for the football. I don't think that there should have been any call there at all. Pass interference on the defense. 15-yard penalty from the previous spot. Automatic first Yeah, that's a bad call there. That That's not a good one. Now, you never hear Jim Lambright complain that much, but I, I guarantee you that's a bad call. If you watch 25, he's locked on the football, not the defender. And he's going up for the football there. Well, they call it on that right hand Doesn't on the make shoulder any difference. pad. He's but... going for the football, not the defender. There shouldn't have been interference. That's the rule. That's by rule. He's got a right to the football. So it's a 15-yard penalty. And first and 10 out at the 45-yard line. Boy, you've got to feel good for Mike Price and these Cougars, don't you? What a season they've had. Trying to close it out here in Seattle. Michael Black is going to keep it on the ground. Yeah, back to the line of scrimmage. That's it. Washington going after the football right now. Well, ABC Sports presentation of college football brought to you by Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? The Home Depot, America's home improvement coach. Dean Witter, there are many ways to measure success. Dean Witter measures success one investor at a time. And Microsoft... Where do you want to go today?
second and ten. Ryan Leaf directing traffic. Going to give it to Michael Black. He's tripped up at the line of scrimmage. Eight twenty and counting left in this one here in Seattle. Terry Gannon, Tim Brandt, and Lewis Johnson. Thirty-eight to twenty-eight. The Cougars up on Washington trying to go to the Rose Bowl for the first time in 67 years. Mike Price and his team came in 9-1. and one. Washington came in 7-3. and three. And this man has had a huge day, Ryan Leaf. Third and 10. Four receivers set. Leaf to throw, has time. Got a man. It's Jackson at the 40. And they'll move the chain. His favorite target all afternoon. What a game Jackson has had, too, with the two long touchdown receptions. He's got seven catches today. Watch this. Again, he's working on Miller. Gets the inside leverage. And Ryan Leaf, like he's done all day, put it right on the spot where he had to do to get the completion, where only his guy could get it. You know, Brock Hewitt of Washington came into this game and he ends up throwing four interceptions. They turn all those into points. Washington's won six of the last eight games against Washington State, and they felt confident in this one. And Ryan Leaf's just been too much. 345 yards in the air. Leaf in a roll, caught in the backfield, and dumped. Jeremiah Farms got there and brought him down. So a loss on the play. 7-11 in county. Jeremiah Farms getting a lot of playing time today. What they're trying to do is they go with five, six, Defensive backs, they're nickel and dime packages. Now, if you look at the top of your screen, he's just locked on Leaf the whole time. He's the nickel linebacker that they brought into this just because of Leaf's ability. He's kind of shadowing him like a spy, got up and made the tackle. And what Washington State's really been able to do today is spread the field and then run it with Michael Black, or Leaf takes his pick. He's got the Fab Five to go to. They spread it, they give it to Black, and he falls down. He slipped at the 40. Trying to cut back. Nigel Burton was right in front of him. Seen several guys slip here this afternoon, yeah. including Ryan Leaf. And part of that is because we had a light rain earlier before the game. There's a light rain falling now, and the turf is a little bit slick. There's a shock. It's raining in Seattle. But actually, they expected showers all afternoon, but just a mist. And it's been comfortable. Gotta really be excited for Mike Price. I keep saying that, but I mean, he's worked so hard. He's been through the tough times. Now he's got the good times, and he's gonna be rewarded. 11 out of 16 on the day. Third downs, it's third and 11. They've had third and long all afternoon. Leaf throws on the run. Guess what? It's complete, and there's another first down. Chris Jackson on the catch. Again, Washington went to a passive defense. They were bringing guys, but they were covering in zone. Now watch, it looks like a man coverage, right? But now look how soft he gets. He doesn't follow him across the middle. He's waiting for help. And there's you got Jensen, number 40, coming into the picture of the linebacker. But again, they find that open area. They make it look like a man. They drop back to his zone, and Leaf's not fooled. And he puts it where only his guy can get it. This Washington defense been based on pressure all year. But Mike Price's offense picking that up now. They're really not coming after Ryan Leaf. The gunshot. Michael Black cuts back, has room brought down by Farms. But he's inside the 20, down to the 17. May have another first down. And how impressive has this drive been? Well, and again, it's been Ryan Leaf that's been leading the way. I mean, he's got him so off balance, he spreads the entire offense, and when you spread the defense that thin, he's able to pass, he's able to rush. And look at this, new Pac-10 record. 3,647 yards for the season. Incredible. It's almost a typo when you look at that. Over 3,600 yards. Well, when, you came, when he came into the game, he had 6,578 career yards. And, uh, I mean, it's just incredible to me. See if I can do the math. 358 on the day. Going to give it to Black. Jensen got a hold of him right away. Jensen's had a great year and a big game today along with Lester Towns, the inside linebacker for the Huskies, but time running out now. Jason Chorak, the All-American down injured on the play. Look at Mike Price in his ninth year at Washington State. You know, his overall record coming into this, four games over 500, but right now, He's on the threshold of the biggest achievement of his entire coaching career. 
He looks calm, but I guarantee you his insides right now are ready to explode. And a favorite son in Pullman. Played in the mid-60s for Washington State, was an assistant there, the head coach at Weaver State, and then back to Washington State, 1931. That's right. Washington. And they're trying to get back. They're very close to that right now. On the verge of returning to Pasadena for the first time in 67 years. Take a break. Seattle, 10 point lead for Washington State. Are there crimson roses? There must be. The Cougars on the verge of doing something that their program has not done since 1931. And I think you make a good point. Mike Price, you look at him and the players, there's a lot of poise there, but on the inside, there's got to be a lot of excitement. Yeah, and you had that feeling all week. You know, he tried to play it down and just say, we're going through a regular work week. The guys have never been looser. We're having fun at practice, but you know they were churning inside. They really wanted this. And they were tight when this game began. And maybe the pressure even bigger because they're playing Washington. They're playing their in-state rival in Annapolis. Michael Black tripped up by Jensen after a short game. Well, you look at what Washington's going to do now, Timmy. They had hoped perhaps to go to the Cotton Bowl with a win today. And a loss, obviously, by either of these teams really drops that team quite a bit in terms of the, uh, of the bowl picture. Yeah, and before this guy right here, Rashawn Sheehy got hurt, I mean, they were really in control of this thing. Mm -hmm. Then they lost two straight. This will make third, three straight. They haven't done that since the 1980s. This is a solid program, though. I mean, Washington overcame a crippling two-year probation, the loss of 20 scholarships, and the resignation of Don James. The worst record they've had is 7-4. Lambright's done a heck of a job here holding this together. Done a great job, and this senior class stuck with him, too. Astro behind Jackson. Looked like he made the catch, but it's incomplete. Kind of trapped it. But with all the good things that we can say about Washington, there's not enough to say about Mike Price and Washington State. What they've done this year is phenomenal. Well, they've always viewed themselves as the program that gets the kids that aren't recruited by everybody else, the undersized kids, the underdogs. And Mike Price likes those kind of guys, and I think he uses that, too, to motivate. This year, ironically, coming into this game, all the attention was on them and their great season, the dream that was still alive, trying to go to the Rose Bowl. But they were the underdogs in this game. With Dell's field goal, 29 yards and good. May have been tipped, actually, but it went through. That's the exclamation point. And how fitting on this day when the ball may have been even tipped, still gets through, and the field goal is good. The trip to Pasadena may be closer. Left here in Seattle. The sideline for Washington State, the realization that they may indeed be going to Pasadena, beginning to set in, but Mike Price not about to close out this game yet. There's still over four minutes left. Still hiding his emotions, isn't he? He's got that poker face. You can't tell how excited he is. <laughs> that little sigh He's there, releasing though. a little bit of pressure, though. Now, you imagine coming into this one, knowing that Washington would like to beat you and keep you out of the Rose Bowl more than anything. As an in-state rival. Jerome Payton looking for Rome, not going to get anywhere. Stopped at the seven, probably shouldn't have brought that out. Well, America's Biggest Road Show rolls to East Lansing next week at 1 o'clock Eastern Regional Action. Penn State, number six in the country, taking on the Spartans or Georgia. And Georgia Tech, good rivalry there in Atlanta. Then at 4.30 Eastern, 1.30 Pacific on ABC Sports. Always a popular show, the Skins game. You see Tiger Woods, Tom Lehman, Marco Mira, and Freddie Couples, the defending champion. Big money riding at every hole next Saturday right here on ABC. They may be wet, they may be cold, but they're happy. Washington State fans here, flag on the play intended for Andre Desassure, the junior out of Woodland Hills, California. I think they're going to call pass interference on Ray Jackson. Jackson's played great defense on that corner all afternoon. They were trying to bracket him this time, and he got a hip into him. Contact was made about the 31-yard line. Pass interference on the defense. 
15 yard penalty from the spot of the foul, automatic first down. Jimmy, you watch this team today, and we've been around the country. How good do you think Washington State is? Well, they look pretty talented. There's no question offensively they're going to put points on the board. Defensively, they still give up a lot of points. I mean, 28 against here today, and the Huskies didn't play that, that well offensively. I mean, they turned it over four times and still have 28 on the board. So they're going to have their hands full with Michigan. There's no question about it. Well, what the defense has been able to do for Mike Price throughout the years, yeah, they've given up a lot of yards but they've made big plays at key moments, not just big plays throughout games, interceptions, turnovers, whatever, but at the most opportune moments. And today, no different, too, the interceptions. Washington State today, 16 penalties mm. for 148 yards. You do that against Michigan, you can't win. Will the timer please set the clock at 3.55? The clock should not have started, it was an incomplete pass. 3.55. Hey, John Saunders, what about the Gators and the Seminoles right now? Well, I'll tell you what. It's a Michigan kind of day. They're going to the Rose Bowl undefeated, and Florida has knocked off Florida State. Thad Busby, with one last drive, is picked off by Dwayne Thomas. Florida runs out the clock, and they knock off number one. So Michigan will be number one in both polls. Terry. Wow. Hey, John, you know, actually, Timmy and I talked about it before this game. We weren't really sure how good Florida State was. They hadn't really been tested. North Carolina game, but that was about it. You go back to the USC game, the first game of the year. And over the long haul, USC proved itself not to be as strong as they have been in years past. So, you know, there was still that question mark hanging over the heads of the Seminoles. Look at the Pac-10 bowl picture and the choices. The Rose Bowl, obviously, first, then Cotton or Holiday and Sun, and then the Deep Eagle Aloha. But they're, they're choices, remember that. They're not necessarily places, as you've come to learn over the last couple of years. Here goes Fred Coleman, bouncing it outside. Still up, down the near sideline. Finally to run out of bounds inside the 40. Coleman's had a big day. Still 3.43 to play in the game, and Washington obviously has not thrown the towel in yet. Still trying to get back in this thing. And everybody's handing the Rose Bowl to Washington State, but oh no, Huskies still playing hard. Especially at home here. 37 yards on that pass. From Hewitt out to Coleman. Jim Lambright certainly hasn't given up. And not many have left, even though it's raining a little harder now here at Husky Stadium. Washington needs two touchdowns, and they've got to do it in 343, which means Hewitt's got to get hot in a hurry. A couple of timeouts for Ben. Hewitt looking over the middle, hit as he throws. Peyton out there. Kicked off. Intercepted at the 10-yard line. And for the second time today, a ball that hit Jerome Peyton in the hands, a little bit high, but it did hit him. Tipped up and then picked off. Both would have been great catches. Yep. Both times he was picked off, they would have been great catches. This time, the ball has a little bit taken off of it by the hit. But you look at this. Payton goes as high as he possibly can. And then Thompson, who had two interceptions last week, gets two here today. He just tipped it out with his right hand, tipped it to himself, and brought it down. That's the third one right there. So he's got five in the last two weeks. Yeah, that's actually his third. Five in two weeks for a freshman. Filling in for Everett, who's been out with the injury. And one of the question marks in the secondary. Boy, how about that pick? He tipped it out of his hands with the right and then fell and caught it as he fell to the ground. So 334 left as Washington State keeps it on the ground. And remember, if time permits, stay tuned for the Thrifty Car Rental postgame report that scores and highlights from across the country. Timeout, Washington, number two. Washington takes their second timeout. They've got one remaining. 321 left for Washington State to try to complete a little bit of history here. Articulated, confident. The approach by Mike Price. It's all stored up. He hasn't shown any emotion. You just wonder what it's going to look like when he actually celebrates this thing. Well, when you think this is the 90th meeting in this series, dating back to 1900, 
This game is huge. Mike Price gets the win of his career. Michael Black with a hole over the right side, up to the 25-yard line, 315 in county. And we talked to Ryan Leaf about this team and his thoughts about it, and we asked him about his thoughts on it, when he thought this was really going to be a special team, and if he did early on. Yeah, yeah, we did. We really thought that this was something special, you know. We knew we had a team that could be, you know, 10-0, 11-0, a um, team going to the Rose Bowl, you know. That, that remained to be seen, though. We hadn't done anything yet. You know, we had talked it. And uh, you got to talk it first, and then you got to walk it, and that's what we've done this season. They're walking now. They're walking tall and proud. A lot of these fans would walk to Pasadena. It's been a long wait. 252. Black straight ahead, going to keep it down on the ground. Two hands around it. And Washington, what do they have? The one timeout left. That's it. And they take that now. Timeout, Washington. It's the last timeout. So that's their last timeout. Now all Washington State has to do is get a first down, and this is over. The Washington State fans, and there are a lot of them in this area, probably more here than across the mountain range over in the Pullman area. They're in the end zone. They're wet. They're cold. But they're singing and dancing. Yep, Pasadena bound. What an explosive team this is, though. I mean, offensively, it's almost as if they score at will. Every time Washington would threat, they'd come back. Washington State would answer. And it's a record-setting offense. I mean, these guys, look at this. Just continue to add up yards. 5,522 total yards this year, which is a new Pac-10 record. And I mean, it's phenomenal. They have 518 yards today. Came in as the number two offense in the country right behind Nebraska, over 500 yards, just over 500 per game. And you mentioned the 518 today. All those numbers right now, though, to Mike Price, guess what? They mean zots. They mean nothing. And the feeling he must have to come back to his alma mater and take them to a Rose Bowl after all these years. This is a guy that has brought it all together. Ryan Leaf. Just his, his will and toughness, what they've endured this year. Well, Arizona State a year ago in that great story. Folks in Pullman would put this one right there. That clock won't move fast enough for him now. They're down to 215. Brian's looking at that clock thinking, Somebody speed that thing up. Got to be the longest two minutes in their lives. How much celebrating going on on the sideline, though, yet? Well, I tell you what. I, I mean, this has been flag day in Seattle. This is uh, this is incredible to me. That's 17 penalties. 17. There's a guy that's been Pac-10 coach of the year before. Gotta believe it's gonna be between Mike Price and Bob Toledo. Of course, I'm a big fan of Bob Toledo's too. What a job he did down there. Perhaps even more difficult. They weren't expecting much. Lost the first two games, came back, and has not lost since, and became a power team. I mean, a huge team. Black with the run, and Bob Toledo may be under more pressure. He took a lot of heat Absolutely. in LA. Absolutely. And so for for the season that they had, and the run that they've had, you have to be happy for him. Michael Black. Tough times as a youngster. Paid his dues. Look at him. Mike Price still working. He's still working hard. Getting guys on and off the field. Black, by the way, 170 yards there. You said at the beginning of the game you thought he would certainly go over 100 yards. Ethan, punt 
Turner trying to get a seam, but he brings it out to the 38. Has to lay it on the ground. And another flag, Terry. Mm. A Washington with double digits and flags, too. Not a bad one here on ABC. And there's a guy who on the next level is going to do a lot. That's an all-pro arm that he has. Dorian Boos finally showing some emotion. And now Holy even the Washington fans starting to give him a standing the ovation for the Air Cougars. The 10-yard penalty is enforced from the end of the kick. Then first and 10. And that's a good point. Oh, there you see him. He's got a smile now. Mike Price, well, he's soaking wet. They've already gone with the bucket over his head. Washington Husky fans appreciative of the job Mike's done and the Washington State Cougars gave him a huge round of applause when the defense came on. I know, and that's a point as Coleman catches one out on the sideline, Timmy, but just talking to people here in Seattle this week, Washington fans, they dearly wanted to beat Washington State. It, it, it was a vindication game after losing two in a row to come back and win one for the seniors. However, all of them were really happy that it was Washington State perhaps going to the Rose Bowl. Yeah, there's a lot of state pride up here. And even though it's a rival, and certainly this is the Apple Cup, I agree with you. They, I mean, they talked about that, and they said, if we can't go, I mean, we're glad that the Cougars are. Coleman again with a catch, this time to the near side. He's had a huge day. Opened up early on with a 38-yard catch for a touchdown. Now run out of bounds at the 47. Less than a minute to go now. Still haven't seen a smile from Lee. A lot to be thankful for the season that they've had. this time slips falls at the 40 yard 45 yard line of Washington State well Chevrolet most valuable players of the game no surprise here Ryan Leaf of Washington State and Lester Towns from Washington Leaf and the best year in Pac-10 history 22 for 38 today 358 yards couple of touchdowns Chevrolet will donate $1,000 to each school's general scholarship fund to reward outstanding students for their academic achievements and to assist those in financial need. It's been a Chevrolet tradition for more than a quarter of a century. Towns with 13 tackles on the afternoon. And three and a half tackles for loss. But Ryan Leaf, the story of this one. Well, you don't want to dampen the moment, but you have to want it now if Ryan Leaf's going to come out. <laughs> I mean, what a talent. That guy right there doesn't want to think about it. And I'm sure he'd want the best for Ryan Leaf. But what a performance he put on today. He's big time. Maurice Shaw still on his feet for the Huskies. Finally brought down at the 32. I hear Lewis Johnson's got himself a new T-shirt. Hello, huh, Lewis? Hey, guys, there's a big red case that has inauspiciously sat here the entire game. They've just broken the lock on it. And check this out. Pac-10 champions, Washington State, on the way to the Rose Bowl. I think this was a plan. How about yeah, that? Baby. Yeah. Yeah. I'll wear the T-shirt. I'm not sure about that rose in the mouth, though. A little thorny. Here's Payton with a catch. Still fighting down to the last nine seconds. And Payton makes the touchdown catch. What a grab. Jerome Payton, who had an incredible catch earlier in the game. A 32-yard reception. So you've got nine seconds left here. It's 41 to 34 after the catch by Payton. Boy, they don't get anything easy. Payton, again, had to lay out completely and make a sensational grab to catch up with Hewitt's pass. He's special, too. You know, he's going to play on the next level. Wentz with the extra point. Well, you do have nine seconds left. You know that onside kick you were talking about? You were about to get it. Yep. So they have 11 out of 13 during Lambright's tenure here at Washington. 
Well, Mike Price might be soaking wet. He's already celebrated a little bit, but now he's got to regroup. Yeah, and he's not going to relax. I mean, you and I were looking at those tapes last week. We saw an onside kick return for a touchdown, and I, I'm sure Mike Price doesn't want his day ruined here with the last nine seconds. continues. Leaf with the helmet back on. Maybe one more time has to come out. The day did not start real well for Ryan Leaf in this offense. The first couple of possessions, they couldn't move the football against the Washington defense. And Rock Heward was the one who put one in the end zone in Coleman, and it was 7-0. But then the turnovers started. The long, deep passes that Hewitt tried. They were picked off. Two long drives by the Cougars. And they've controlled things for the most part since then. And Tim Washington made the comeback, but only nine seconds left. Right Washington now. State has the sure hand guys in. Good hands team. There it is. Recovered at the 43. And that'll do it. Washington on the recovery. That one seals it. And now, finally, a different hat. Nineteen thirty one was the last time they went. And Mike Price is taking it back. The last time they were there, and we said yesterday, the shadow was just getting started on the radio. And, of course, there was no television. So for the first time since you can wear a face mask on your helmet, Washington State is going to the Rose Bowl. your bags in Pullman. You're going to Pasadena. Mike Price taking his alma mater. And most of these people you see on the field, along with Ryan Leaf. The most prolific year that anyone's ever had in the Pac-10. More important to Ryan Leaf right now, though, is sharing what all this means with all of those Cougar fans. PA announcer here at Husky Stadium just said, from all of us at the University of Washington to those in Washington State, good luck at the Rose Bowl. So night falls on Seattle. And the Cougars are going to Pasadena. What a great story. For Tim Brandon, Lewis Johnson, I'm Terry Gannon. Hope you enjoy it. The John Saunders in New York.